All right. Well, welcome back to the Deep Weed Podcast. This is where we have conversations about learning skills, developing yourself, and a bunch of other deep weeb things like learning Japanese through immersion. I'm Kanji Eater, and joining me again is Jordan. Hey, man. Thanks for joining again. Hey. Absolutely. So today uh, we have the Japan Code with us. Uh, before we get into all things Japan Code, and we've got quite a long list <laughs> of questions for them, uh, I just want to say if you are new to the channel and haven't yet, uh, please do like, subscribe, and follow. Uh, if you're learning Japanese, I think you'll find the, some of the interviews we have on this channel uh, pretty useful. And I will also say that we now have a Discord. You asked for it. You got it. It's out there. Uh, I've been doing some tech, tech support for uh, some people around the new Kindle add-on that's been pretty popular, as well as just talking a little bit more in depth around some of the habits uh, I've been building and as well as some tips and tricks. Uh, so uh, check that out. Uh, also, shout out to Betadel, who, since I've started the podcast, uh, he is the first patron. So thank you very much for joining. That's uh, pretty cool. Appreciate you throwing some singles towards uh, your boy Kanji Eater. Uh, so the Japan Code. Uh, he's labeled himself as a serial restarter and also uh, resonating with me. He's fallen into the trap of wanting to want to learn Japanese. Uh, oh, yeah. And... Somewhere along the way, though, things must have clicked because now you have read over 300 volumes of manga. You've read, uh, what, ar around 10 volumes of novels. Um, yeah, 11. 11 now. now, okay. And I'm sure a few thousand hours of la Lolita based anime has, you know, slipped its way in there as well. Uh, and you've been, documenting in, you've been documenting it all for the people uh, on YouTube and Twitter. Uh, so, yeah, please tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Yeah, so I'm the Japan Code. Uh, I'm a 26-year-old French-Canadian guy who learned English unintentionally as a teen and who is now intentionally learning Japanese. Very nice. Awesome. Awesome. So let's, let's just go ahead and get into the show here with uh, kicking off with the deep goals. So uh, we've all got some goals that we're tracking against on this podcast. Um, I've got uh, some updates that I wanted to share and just keep documenting that on a monthly basis so people can see just how slow progress really is. And uh, then I'll pass it off to Jordan and then to the Japan Code to hear where he's at. In the meantime, if you have any goals or progress that you've been making on things, please do type it into chat. Uh, and if uh, we see something, we can shout it out. Uh, give, some, give some props where they're due. So... Uh, as far as goals and updates, since the last podcast, uh, I've started doing something called uh, Kikiyomi. So reading and listening at the same time. I got this uh, idea from uh, Fluent Forever. It's one of the few like mainstream uh, English books around like immersion-based language learning. And yeah. I, I don't know that I would really recommend people dive in and read that book like if you're already this deep into it if you found the deep weep podcast like you're deep okay so you, you yeah <laughs> so you probably know about ajat and you know stephen cratchin's theory all that sort of input hypothesis fun stuff uh however uh this was one of the things that i got from it and i had tried it years ago with um Pate no yusha the uh, rising of the shield hero um However, at that point, when I was trying to break into novels, I don't know if it was just that book, the difficulty with it, it didn't really click with me. Um, but now, uh, where I'm at now, I just did uh, Kimi no Nawa. So, uh, Your Name, uh, I'd, I'd seen the movie a couple of years ago, but the audiobook is about six hours. And the actual novel is like about 150 pages. So I was like, uh, this will take me a couple of weeks, like one or two weeks maybe to read if I do like an hour a day probably but the advantage with setting like an audiobook in the background is a couple and that this is what I found is uh, first off it sets a pace so I've, I've liked having that I got used to that with um, doing like let's plays with visual novels so I've been doing Higurashi as anybody knows um, and that's it's it's really good but it's really difficult and it would be way more difficult if it was just me reading it silently uh, for some of the uh, non-audio parts of it. So it's it's good to have like a Japanese person setting the pace on it, um, especially like with Let's Plays, because then you see just just how difficult kanji really is and that nobody knows how to read any of the kanji, apparently. <laughs> yeah, right. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's one thing. So it, it's good for pacing. Um, it's also been good for uh, like making it easier to understand like who's speaking. 
that was especially useful in your name where they keep switching bodies and switching characters um like mid sentence so mm, yeah. uh, so it, this was another interesting thing that I, I don't know that now that i've been listening to more audiobooks in japanese to just kind of build up my tolerance for them i've noticed like oh wow there's their voice acting in audiobooks is is actual voice acting for some of these for some of these it's not just one old man trying to speak like Hermione from Harry Potter, they'll actually get a voice actor in there. <laughs> so, so that's been, that's been useful as well. Um, and then I find it also easier to visualize just because you have people speaking so you can hear the different nuances of things, even if you're not understanding all of the words. So uh, Kiki Yomi, try that out if you're having trouble getting into just like reading in general. I, f I found that that's... Uh, I, I didn't really intentionally get into it, but it was like, oh, I was doing visual novels. And then I was like, well, I, I kind of like this style of having narration in the background. I also think that in general, like, it's really easy to, uh, well, because it's not just reading. Like, I, th I think that's probably still your best bet. Uh, it's still just going to be useful for you. Like, it, so this is for me more of like a dessert thing, like a, uh, this is this is the extra thing that uh, I, I wouldn't do this exclusively because I think in general, like you're going to be skimming more if you're doing this sort of reading. But uh, I found it useful in addition. So um, I like it. Try it out. Uh, but I would say don't depend on it exclusively for your reading practice. Uh, other than that, I also goofed my Anki stats pretty hard this week because I took Stevie's advice and switched to a, a 70 laps modifier interval when I was doing like a 30. And long story short, I, I stopped knowing my mature cards real quick. So did that for <laughs> um, a couple of weeks. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, I mean, but at this point, it's like I've been doing Anki for six years. It's like, oh, boy, my, my Anki time spiking. Like, I'll, I'll live. Um, I just I, I try not to modify my, my Anki like uh, stats or not stats, but uh, the different settings just based on one bad day of review. It's really tempting to, but... <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll change this in two weeks. I just have to survive it for now. Um, so other than that, uh, I've been doing uh, six and a half hours of active immersion, which has been pretty awesome, uh, though I'm getting way busier at work. So I assume that will drop soon. And then I've been doing like, I was doing an hour and 30 about in Anki, but now it's, it's spiking up to like an hour and 40. And this week it's been like two hours. So that sucks. So um going to try to keep tweaking some settings uh i i started i went back to adding 10 cards a week and what were you adding before? i was adding five for about three months when i when i did okay. that whole binge mm -hmm. that i talked about in the last episode um right. but it seems that adding 10 cards and especially since i'm doing like rare words because i'm reading difficult books like arslan senki mm -hmm. like i they're not sticking as well as i would like but i really like adding 10 cards a day five cards just seems too slow for the amount of new words i'm still encountering with these complex books so i'm gonna try to just stick it out but we'll find out in the next episode what happened to kanji eater uh so <laughs> go ahead jordan what, what have you been uh working on any updates on your side yeah so i think before i said i had like stopped anki i i started back again um so i've been kind of slowly adding different cards um a lot of the cards I've been adding have been from like IGN or okay. uh, what was it? Like it was like IGN Japan. Um, yeah, like gaming sites, things mm -hmm. I've been really interested in. Um, so what else? Um, doctor gave me the green light for uh, lifting. So it's like, nice. you know, I stopped working out. So it's like now I can start doing that again. So I, you know, trying to, you know, get back into the swing of things. Um and I've just been coding more, so still looking for a job, um, coding more, getting, you know, getting back on, on that horse. Uh, yeah, and then reading more, just like anything I can get my hands on now. But now it's just articles because I think like Final Fantasy VII uh, Remake, they've been talking about that, like Bravely Default. I got that in Japanese, so I've been playing a little bit, not, not too much. Uh, and... Yeah, that's that's those are my big ones. Uh, I also got my braces tightened, so if it sounds like I'm slurring my words, I promise <laughs> it's not because of these shots I had earlier. Yeah, yeah. he's so, he's sober this time. <laughs> this time, <laughs> but but yeah, no, just slowly kind of like getting back into the swing of things, trying to do Japanese in the morning for sure, for sure. Before mm -hmm. you know, getting my workday started. 
All right, cool, man. Cool. Very. That's that's awesome to hear. You're making some progress with that. Uh, how about you? Uh, the Japan code. What what sort of goals you've been setting lately? So right now, I've just been working on trying to uh, increase how much contact with Japanese that I have, uh, because my my average per day was um, pretty low compared to what I would have wanted. Like it used to be on work days, it used to be maybe like an hour and a half to two hours per day. And now I've just been trying to find where I can uh, put in more Japanese. Like, for example, I've started uh, reading light novels on my phone. So when I'm waiting for the bus, uh, I can I can be reading instead of just not doing anything. Uh, or when I go to the bathroom at work and stuff like that. Uh, just also watching variety shows in the morning when I wake up and just trying to fill in the time as much as I can. And the past week I've done on average three hours and a half per day. So that's a big increase. Yeah, nice for sure. Th that, that, that's interesting because that was one of the things that I picked up this year, like having having been slacking on the passive immersion for probably like mm -hmm. the year prior. Uh, when, when I started that back up again, it was just like, oh, having that mentality of yeah, it's always going on it. It forces you to do some of those things that you're talking about, you know, just, oh, what what little places can I still slip this in? Because you always have that reminder. Uh, yeah, that's exactly how it started, actually, because I haven't been doing passive immersion for at least two years. So like two or three weeks ago, I started doing it and I was like, wait, I have chunks of time with like 10 to 20 minutes in a row where I could be doing active instead. And that's how I've been finding that stuff. That's, that's funny that that. Yeah, that's exactly what my experience <laughs> was as well. Uh, so let's let's jump into it. So I guess let's 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 give the newbies uh, their their quick rundown. You know the Japan code. Where did the where did the journey start with you, man? So uh, well, with Japanese, uh, I actually started learning the very first time uh, in very late 2011 or early 2012. I'm not exactly certain. So it's been about nine years, almost ten, uh, since my first attempt. My first attempt was only a couple of days, and then I stopped. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> and you're going to soon see why I call myself a serial restarter. <laughs> so but I actually don't have any like specific stats because I never kept track of when I started and when I stopped. But uh, from 2012 till 2017, I've probably started and quit at least five or six times. And none uh, of those times what drew were more you than... to Japanese. Sorry, I, I'm sorry. That's that's the thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. Uh, when I, when I think back in 2011, graduated from high school, started college, and somewhere in between those two, I went from listening to K-pop, so Korean pop, to wow, Japan's a thing. <laughs> but I don't know what brought me to that. Uh, I, I had started watching uh, anime and reading manga a year or two before, so I guess at some point it kind of just clicked, but I don't remember what exactly. <laughs> that that's interesting. So, uh, serial restarter. So, so when you actually started giving it a real go in probably what like 2018, beginning of the year, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I got back into Japanese uh, in late 2017, but I wasn't doing much uh, until December when I. Uh, found Matt's videos. I, I had already seen them before, but it, they just went right over my head. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the, at that point, I saw them again, and it, it kind of clicked. And then in early 2018, that's when I uh, got back into it. And here I am today, three years later. Nice. So uh, yeah, that, that was one year before I, I found Matt's stuff and started getting into the immersion-based stuff. So that's interesting. So uh, three years, huh? Like So since your last update video, it's it's it's, the trail's gone a little cold. What's been going on, man? Where where have you been? What you been doing? Uh, well, okay. When was my last update? I guess it was almost a year ago now. Uh, Around I think that. it was in April of last year. So after that, I kind of got a, a, a little down with my, my Japanese, as it tends to happen every year. Um, but uh, the down was not as down as usual, because... The previous years, I always had a period where I basically didn't know Japanese. Really, uh, I'd get addicted to like RuneScape and stuff like mm -hmm. that, uh, just games. Um, but that year, uh, I, I was still doing Japanese, just less, like maybe an hour a day, and that was it. Uh, until at some point, I I just thought, what am I doing? You know, this isn't RuneScape isn't bringing me anything, whereas Japanese is what I want to do and what I actually enjoy doing. 
Um, and then through talking with people, I just started reading manga. And that's when, uh, well, not started reading manga, but starting get, getting back into it. And uh, that's when things kind of clicked. And I, I went from re reading uh, maybe like 15 minutes to 30 minutes a day to reading an hour and two hours. And then in December, I was reading, uh, I read 50 volumes uh, in a month Ooh. and yeah nice. That's... <laughs> and and then uh, at the end I, start, I i i decided you know manga i love manga but it's not challenging me enough because uh, with the even if the the, the vocab itself uh, can be hard uh, because of the furigana i can just skip right over it and it, it doesn't push me to want to learn more so uh, at that point i switched to visual novels and then after a month i'm like you know what that's not it, it, it's visual novels are great, but my goal is related to light novels, so I might as well read light novels instead. And, so, so, yeah. so your goals there? What, what what goal are you speaking to there? Yeah, so uh, it's not my my long term goal, just my goal for uh, the year, I guess. Uh, w one of the things that got me back into Japanese was wanting to get further into the series uh, Re Zero. Okay, and and so. But uh, two years ago, when I, I first tried to read it, uh, obviously, I uh, know not two years ago, one year ago, uh, obviously it was way above my level. Mm. S but I still forced myself to read through it. And I read two volumes and a half uh, and then burned out because it was way above my level. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was not I was barely looking up anything. I wasn't making any Anki cards or anything like that. So I wasn't progressing. So uh, now my goal is basically to get to a point where I can read it and have fun while reading it, not just, you know force myself through it gotcha so uh I, I know this was something that you did mention in your most recent video about yeah that that kind of burnout phase with light novels i know last episode we were i think uh stevie and i were were ganging up on jordan beating him up around uh <laughs> going into denser and denser material is that uh i mean do you what do you? What are your thoughts on that now? Around you know preventing burnout around going into more difficult material. Uh, well, just like anything, I think you can have a transition phase. So for me, that transition phase was uh, reading the series called uh, Kuma 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 Bea. Okay. So it's just like Kuma and Hiragana, uh, Kuma and uh, Katakana, and then Kuma and Kanji. Mm -hmm. um, and the the reason for it is because uh, it's super easy. <laughs> Gotcha. <laughs> it's it, it, it's probably it's easier than a lot of manga that i've read but because there's no fu uh, furigana and it's text only uh, it kind of like it builds up the the confidence that hey i can actually read a light novel mm -hmm. and then after that you can move on to something slightly harder and slightly harder and go on like that are, are you reading like physical texts or are you using something that like that you can scan make it easier as well Oh no! I'm just reading on uh, on my computer okay. or my iPad, gotcha. so I can just like highlight and use the I use the Migaku uh, dictionary for easy lookups. Gotcha! So. Very nice. cool. So I know that was one of Mobile Mally's questions, and he just dropped in the chat uh, around how how has that Kuma light novel series been going and boosting your confidence? I think you just answered his question, which is yeah, kind it got of. <laughs> it, it helped out a lot. Uh, so using that as a building block. Where are you headed now? Uh, well, I'm. I've actually restarted uh, reading it now. Uh, that's what I'm reading on my phone, like I was mentioning okay. earlier. Um, and because it's so easy, I can actually read it and not bother uh, looking up anything. Uh, not that I understand everything, but just that it's not stopping me from actually understanding what's going on. Um, and now I'm reading a series called uh, Honzuki no Gekokujo. It's uh, Ascendance of Bookworm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's a lot harder than I expected, but now that I think about it, just the plot makes sense. It's a, a girl who, who's trying to like create books, but from scratch, like cre having to create paper and ink and stuff like that. So obviously, that's a bit complicated. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Yeah. But uh, it's it's actually going well. I think I've made uh, in a month. I've made like three hundred cards from it so far, nice. and uh, it's uh, it's it's been helping me a lot. There's a lot of common words and a lot of not so common, but common within the series. And it's just helping me build a, a, a web of knowledge. Nice. I, I will also say that I, until this year, when I started re reading Arslan Senki, I was really, I, I just kept picking up books that I was like, oh man, I don't know that I really want to read this one. And yeah, over the last three months, 
despite this being much harder than like it's by the same guy who wrote, wrote Galactic Whatever Heroes, the the, the yeah, really yeah. difficult one. Um, despite it being by him, uh, it's been super interesting. So I'm already on the third book, and no no signs of stopping. Uh, also, like with I've already made like a thousand Anki cards, which if I, if I stay at like five cards Ooh. a day, that's 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 like a year's worth right there <laughs> practically. So um, that's that's been going really well as far as like getting getting into novels because it's finally like oh I finally have a couple series and I really like this author so I'll probably try out some of his other stuff as well. Um, and but yeah, that's that's really been helping actually being interested in what I'm reading for a change instead of like I forget what it was that I was reading. I, it's on my book meter. You can check it out. There's a handful like Ikebukuro okay. Westgate Park. I thought I would like it. I hated it. So. Uh, don't know, but uh, what what about you, Jordan? Are you are you trying out any novels yet, or are you still? It's <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> you got. I was just like, I was just about to say like, oh man, thanks. Japanko's coming on, beating up on me. But no, actually, I have started reading Ooh. novels. Surprisingly, um, slowly been making. Well, I, there's two. Uh, Welcome to the NHK. That's, should be a good um, one. Nice. Right. Which I'm just like, okay, I've seen a little bit, so I'm like. I, I'm I want to read it first and then watch it. I feel like I'm going I'm taking taking your advice, uh, Kanji Eater for sure. Uh, so, um, and then there is I can't remember what it was. Uh, it, it was basically about a guy he gets transported to another world. I guess he dies. That's literally like, every light novel, <laughs> yeah, right? I know, right? <laughs> no, it's like Kono. I forgot. Um, Kono. Uh, I can't remember. All right, yeah. but. Yeah, um, those two for Konosuba? sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's oh, what that's, yeah, that's a great right. one. Right. So I was like, okay, I read a little bit of that, like the first chapter, and I was like, okay, I get this. This makes making sense. I can I can go down this path. It's kind of got the you know rising of the shield hero esque, and I, I got into the point where it's like, I I can't keep reading things I've seen before because I know the plot and it's yeah. not it's not exactly. exciting. And I'm like, okay, this is boring. Like I so now that you know getting into things that I don't know. Um, I'm hopefully, you know, can, can go down that path. So I've started slowly, but surely I think I'm going like maybe 10 minutes a day. I might increase it to 20 and then, and then go from there. Gotcha. Yeah. And like, like I said, it, I think we talked about visual novels last time quite a bit as well. Are you trying out any of those yet, Jordan? Have any of those sparked your interest? No, not quite. No, I've still been just like, I do have a bunch of games that I do want to play that I, but not, not. That's not. I haven't really gotten into to visual novels. Just, just quite yeah. It's yet. another one of those ones. You, I, I feel like I, I'm building up lists of things to get into, and that <laughs> that's still a short list for visual novels. But it's it, now that I have like, oh, there's quite a few that I'm actually pretty interested in. So that's that's keeping me going through. I think I'm like uh, the the gameplay so far is 150 hours into Higurashi. So that means that I'm taking even longer than that. So it's. I'm deep into it. I do like that idea that you have, though. Like you not playing and you watching somebody else. That I feel yeah. like is sure for me is like, oh wow, that's more entertaining. And or games that like, okay, I'd love to play this game in Japanese, but I don't have the time or the resources to to play yeah. it. So it's like, oh cool, I can I can just watch somebody else. It's very good for the Phoenix Wright series because I always hated having to solve the <laughs> case and you actually use my brain. So that's exactly. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so uh, how about you, the Japan Code? I know you were playing Clanod there for a while. Uh, how's yeah? What, what are you up to with visual novels? I haven't touched touched visual novels since I started okay. like novels. Uh, but but the thing is, there's a lot of uh, visual novels I want to play, mm-hmm. or or I guess now I, I want to watch them, someone else play them. Okay. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, I I don't know. Um, I I just can't. I have a hard time focusing on like multiple things at the same time. So gotcha. like with reading, if I'm doing light novels, I don't want to also do uh, uh, visual novels at the same time. So it's more like once I've gotten my fill with light novels and I'm kind of starting to eh, kind of don't really want to read anymore, then I'm going to switch back to visual novels and just keep on going like that. Manga is different. It doesn't count. I can read that whenever. <laughs> yeah, I got you. That's 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 also how I feel about manga. Like I mentioned this as well. Like that's the one I don't have to schedule. I'll just fit it in whenever I can. But then the other things, I, exactly. I just schedule them into like a set amount of time. That way, it's like okay, well, if I'm gonna do the Kikiyomi thing today. That's gonna be at most an hour, and then I'll move on from there. So that's that's been useful for me. Uh, so how about let's talk about like how how did you get into the reading side of things? Like what. 
how did you break into it? Um, that's a good question. When at well, okay, so I, when I when I started, uh, well, not when I started doing Japanese, but when I started this attempt, like back in 2018, uh, the the big thing was don't read or it's gonna mess up your accents. <laughs> so back yeah. then I was doing yeah. only listening. I think I, I didn't do any reading outside of Anki for a, a good nine months, uh, if not a bit more. Uh, but when I did start reading, uh, I went with manga, of course, mm. but uh, I went with easy manga, mm. uh, but not because it was easy, but because I was actually interested in mm. them. Um, so obviously there's the the, the typical like uh, Yotsubato, mm -hmm. but I love Slice of Life. So for me, it's like one of my favorites, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of language. So that was great for that. And uh, I also read uh, some uh, Karakai Jozu no Takagi-san, mm -hmm. uh, which is honestly just as easy, if not easier at some point points so i'm not sure why not more people uh not many people are talking about it but uh yeah i just went with that and then after that i just branched out to reading whatever i felt like it uh, i think my third was like one punch man which isn't easy so so st started off with with the manga and then how long did it take you to start like getting into novels and that sort of thing um let's see uh, i think the first time i tried novels was in may 2019 so it was about a year and three months four months okay. no five months actually um but uh it didn't go very well <laughs> but the main reason for that is just because uh i had already basically stopped using anki like i was still doing reviews but i was already not doing any sort of new cards or anything like mm -hmm. that uh, but i was also not looking up anything while reading and so the combo of both of these made it really hard. Mm. So I, w I, w I was barely learning anything. Just a couple of words here and there that you can learn just from the context or from knowing the kanji. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, yeah. I so, so would you say like not doing as many lookups was slowing down your progress then? And would you do have done oh, something yeah, different there? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, first of all, I wouldn't have read physically. <laughs> I would have. I would have yeah. just read the. Uh, like on my Kindle or iPad or something like mm -hmm. that. And then I just even, well, first of all, if I could have minded, that would have helped me a mm -hmm. lot and uh, done on key reps and stuff like that. Uh, but even without that, just looking up words when they pop up to you is mm -hmm. so helpful. Uh, because if the word is popping up to you, then that means you've seen it a bunch of times already. And your brain is like, I want to acquire that word. Please look it up. Mm -hmm. And then you're not doing it. <laughs> so yeah, that really slowed me down a lot. And so, I one one of our questions from DJ the Dog. Uh, there's two D's there, so the Dog is I, I assume how have <laughs> the proper pronunciation. So, uh, he's he asked. So when did the Japan Code stop needing Yomi Chan dictionary lookups to read a book? I'm on my eleventh novel, and while it's definitely gotten easier, it's still difficult, and Yomi Chan is needed often. Uh, what what would you tell our young DJ the dog? So when did I stop uh, needing dictionary lookups? Never. <laughs> that's that's a simple the answer. Reality. <laughs> you <Yep>. don't. <laughs> I mean, at I guess at some point you do, but I'm not at that point at all yet. Uh, I can read and have fun without looking up, uh, but I'm not going to understand everything. I'm going to miss some important points. Uh, I guess depending on how easy or how tough the series is but in general like I, st I still do need uh to look up like almost every sentence uh and i'm also on my 11th novel so that's perfect yeah <laughs> good point uh what what about you jordan uh would when you're reading something how often are you looking up words um for light novels more more often than not um i'm looking things up for articles um if it's if it's like if I'm like in the flow and I I, I drop it, I'm like, wait, mm -hmm. okay, I just missed this word. I'll go back. But like if I'm skimming every now and again, but but in in, in manga, typically like never. Mm -hmm. Typically never for manga. Same. But, but light novels for sure. I like I, I'm like, okay, I think I know this word. And it's like, oh wait, no, this is this is not what I thought it was. So I, I often, mm -hmm. to be honest, often. Gotcha. So yeah, I will say I will drop some stats probably on Twitter or the Discord specifically to your name. And because since I was on my Kindle, I can actually see, I think I can see how many times I actually looked up words and then how many times I oh, said, really? I want to make a word because I don't know this. Uh, so I'll, I'll nice. drop some of that and then I'll also try to normalize it so that it's like 
by the amount of words that were actually in the book. Um, and yeah, I will say something like your name a couple couple hundred times in the fifty or one hundred and fifty pages or so. I think I made like three hundred cards ish. I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll drop the specific numbers. Oh but God. uh, what was it? The Arslan Sinki is like yeah. Every sentence there's some new obscure word. And honestly, I. I don't know. Maybe I'm just starting to be a kanji nerd, which I'm living up to my name. But it's like every one, it's like, <laughs> yep, yep, I want that. Yep, that's good. That's interesting. That's weird. And then I started reading for the like Kiki Yomi thing. So I finished your name. So I moved on to Ningen Isu, which is I, I'm guessing it's like a horror sort of thing, but it's like from a hundred like years yeah. ago. Um, and it's by I'm gonna call him because I don't know him very much about him, and what I've seen so far has compared him to this, the Japanese Edgar Allan Poe. So I'm guessing it's just like this 100-year-old ancient Japanese man who uh, is kind of emo on the inside. So uh, reading something <laughs> that old, uh, there's definitely a lot of weird new kanji things that I'm also looking up. So it all depends on what you're reading and how comfortable you are with it, I think. Also, I started looking into reading, uh, what is it? Uh, Sangokushi, the uh, three romance, three kingdoms one. Oh yeah, that one's like got like three thousand unique kanji in it. I mean, that one's you know based on Chinese stuff, so it's probably got some weird, funky Chinese names in it. But it's like when I read that, like that, there's gonna be a lot of lookups. So all depends, yeah. I think, where you're at. I'll also say for manga, I still I, I read difficult manga i would say and so i there's still quite a few lookups uh in that but then like easy stuff like there there are some manga that i don't have to you know use use any lookups for and those are the ones that i put on my phone so like ice shield 21 a football one mm. uh Bak yeah. bakuman is like mm. uh it, it's complex like there are words i won't know but it's just like yeah, i i can get most of it from that one so uh, all all depends on what it is. If it's something weird like fake history things, like Golden Kamui or like the, what's his name, Maburoshi Daijiro or stuff like that. Like it's uh, I'm gonna be looking up words almost as much as a light novel. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's yeah, funny uh, you mentioned Bakuman. Yeah, because I I have an autographed uh, a copy of the first volume. Really? So who's it? Who's it autographed <laughs> yeah. by? Uh, by the uh, the artist. Okay. Yeah. He's. he's He's pretty cool. I, I really like his art. Yeah. He's got quite a few different series I want to check out because I've, I've been slacking besides Death Note. <laughs> I, that, that was the only one that I've read, I think, by him so far. Oh, okay. Uh, so let's back, back to the questions. So as far as uh, reading, is, are, there, are there any other tips or tricks you would give to people along their way for uh, getting, out, getting along with reading? Or does that pretty much wrap that up? Any other thoughts on reading? Uh, well, if you're finding it like hard or maybe not hard, but like daunting to get into it, maybe just pick something that you've already watched the anime of or mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, I do that a lot. Actually, most of my reading has been uh, a series that I've already watched the anime of. And then I'm either rereading the part that I've already watched mm -hmm. or just, you know, going further. But then it's I'm familiar with it. So that's a. Uh... That that's interesting because usually when I do it, it's it, I can't rewatch or I can't read something after I've watched it. Um, but what what about you, Jordan? Like wh where have you been with that? Maybe maybe the first maybe your first light novel or your first few. Um, I think my first serious one, beginning to end, uh, Rising of the Shield Hero. Um, the the and I re I feel like the reason I was able to get through that is because. I knew the plot. I knew the story. Right. I mean, there were so many new words. Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, okay. I have no idea what's going on. And so like as time went on, I was like, oh, okay. Now I'm starting to see what's happening here. And then moving on to the second one, I was like, oh, okay. Well, now that I, I'm more familiar with these words and these characters, like, okay, I know what's going to happen. I'm kind of not, not feeling this. So it's like mm. getting that, that second, uh, you know, the second wind is, is, is important. I would, I would agree with all of that. Uh, f as for listening practice, uh, what have you been doing on that front, uh, the Japan Code? What does listening practice oh, look like for you? Uh, I listen to a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously, there's anime. I've spent thousands upon thousands of hours watching anime. Uh, but I also uh, watched a, uh, watch a decent amount of uh, YouTube. 
uh, like some YouTube channels and I've kind of gotten into VTubers a little bit. Okay. Uh, but and also uh, I think uh, uh, one thing I've talked to frequently on Twitter is uh, variety shows mm -hmm. because not many people watch variety shows. So I try to like bring it into people's lives a bit because it's really it's really great. It, but it depends what you're watching. If you're just like turning on TV, then yeah, chances are it's going to be something kind of shitty. But but if you know what to look for, uh, there's a lot of uh, hidden gems in there. Gotcha. So I think. Okay, so yeah, give us give us some top variety shows. What uh, what, what have you been enjoying recently? Oh God. Okay. Wait. And uh, where have where have you list. been watching these as well? Uh, there's there's two different places. Uh, one of them is free and one of them is paid, but none of them are legal. So, <laughs> okay. yeah, <laughs> even the paid one isn't legal. So, because uh, unless you can watch, unless you have access to Japanese TV, there's no legal way of watching Japanese TV. You know, uh, but yeah, there's uh, there's a, a website called uh, Gaki no Tsukai. It's Gaki dash no dash Tsukai. Uh, and on there you can download uh, a lot of uh, variety shows uh, and I'm also subscribed to uh, 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 something called Ai Sakura which is basically like a, a TV it's basically TV it's just you have access to uh, 48 or 96 channels depending on which uh, uh, version you take and there's a guide and you can go back two weeks so uh, it's very helpful you don't have to watch it live you can you miss a show that's fine it's still there for two weeks and uh, it's it's really worth it if you watch a good amount. Uh, it's pretty expensive though, like uh, two hundred and fifty per year. So, mm. uh, do do you watch it, any variety shows, uh, Jordan? Any any that you've been checking out? Um, not so. I haven't recently. Uh, I did in the past. Uh, what is it? Sakai no Hatema de Iteku, which mm. was like they'd go around in different areas of the world and like there'd be like random challenges that some of the hosts and co-hosts would would be a part of. Like Imoto was like that was her name. I, I don't know if that was her real name, but like uh, uh <laughs> no, she had like the weird eyebrows and whatnot, but but yeah, um, I know who there was that about. one. Um and then there was like uh Sakai Banzuke, which is Similar, like the same woman, Imoto, and some other guy, but they like go around the world and like, oh, the, the 10 places that like love sushi or like the, the cleanest place in the world. And it goes like and it talks about facts and like, yeah, this is from this person is from this area. And they go around and talk. And then they have like random hosts who also speak Japanese and they like come in and talk about like their country and like, oh, yeah, we're, we're really clean in Holland or blah, blah, blah. So it's kind of cool because it's like you get to see other, you know, learning other cultures you know, through Japanese. So, like, those two for sure have been like, oh, whoa, this is actually different from anime. I'm actually, like, learning, like, maybe some useful things. So, those two. I also look for that in my variety shows. What, wh Which ones have you been watching, uh, The Japan Code? Oh, a lot. <laughs> I have a, a, well, I actually use a site called uh, My Drama List, which you can uh, track, you know, dramas mm -hmm. and stuff, but you can also track variety shows on there. And uh, well, some of my favorites are just uh, Gaki no Tsukai, which yeah. is the site I mentioned is based on. Uh, Suiyobi no Downtown, which is like kind of a, a show where they, they take crazy, stupid theories and then test them. Uh, like one of them was just, uh, you know, set phrases like, uh, let's say, uh, Otsukare Sama. And then what if you replace every sound in there except the first and the last? Will people notice? And then they go ahead and try on people and see how, if they react, you know? Or uh, fake having a fake uh, floor, but it's actually sticky, but you can't tell. So and then trying it out on people and seeing the reactions and stuff like that. It's uh, really funny. <laughs> nice. I, I that that one actually the Sui Yobi one. I that I just found out about that one like last week, and I think I'm gonna have to check it out. I've been watching. You have to. Uh, what is it? Nando Kore, which is like a mystery investigation one where they look up like, I don't know, like just random. Like, like here, here was a good one. A village of people and all their cows just like died overnight instantly. And so it's like, huh, what killed them? And then they'll go and investigate. So it's kind of like the um, what Jordan was talking about, like going in, finding out things. Sometimes it's also just like fake YouTube videos, though. So I'm a little disappointed yeah. in some of the quality. Mm, okay. But there's also there's some good ones. Like some of the like UFO encounters, it's like, okay, guys, like you got some dust on your limbs. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> like we don't need to make an episode about this. But uh, so so that that one's been one that I've been enjoying as well as uh, have have you seen the Japan Code? What's it called? The uh, uh, Boken Boken Shonen one. The uh, 
like one where they have to like escape an island at every episode okay okay I, I, oh no no i haven't i am boken shonen something like that uh it's that one that one's pretty good too i've been enjoying that one uh so so variety shows uh make up a large part of your listening and anime as well uh in any mostly anime. okay okay <laughs> what, what other things are you doing for listening any anything else uh no just those three things basically uh youtube anime uh variety shows i think that's about it really gotcha cool so you also used to have a well you still have it uh a channel of uh you know making some guitar covers heavy metal i also at one point considered myself to be a guitarist and then got you know taken in by japan uh and (laughs) that has slowly gone downhill what about yourself how where are you at with that okay okay so i'm not alone Uh, i haven't played in like four years my guitar is right here i I can see it it's staring at me every day but i haven't touched it in four years okay okay (laughs) so i mean you were you were pretty serious about it too so what's what's it been like like how did that happen well it's funny because uh, people always say exactly that that i was serious about it but it's never something i actually like wanted to learn mm. uh at first it was pushed onto me mm. and then i was just like and yeah, it's fun i'll just play mm-hmm. and then i was playing what was fun and i never tried to get better i just got better through having fun through having fun mm-hmm. which again comes back to the same as with japanese and language learning and stuff like that All right. Uh, but it's it's been it's it's been different not playing. Uh, sometimes I'll listen to a song that just has a good guitar riff, and I'm like, I really want to play this. <laughs> so I I mean, do you still find yourself like making time to listen to music, or is that is it just through like? Because I I know for me it's just through like the mediums I'm watching at this point. It's like I'm not looking out for new bands and that sort of stuff. It's like oh this anime has this song in it. That's where I'm listening to music. Like what about you? Yeah, that's basically the same. Once in a while, I'll just put on a playlist and just listen to music, same. but it's pretty rare. Right. And it's just Japanese music. Not I, I don't listen to and I basically listen to nothing that I used to. So. Oh really? So so no more metal? Yeah. Uh, basically no. Yeah, because I, I at first. It's not because I don't enjoy it. I still enjoy it. But uh, I took Katsumoto's advice to heart and deleted everything <laughs> back uh, years ago. So I, ha- I had the on my <laughs> iTunes, I had close to 3,000 songs and they're just gone forever. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I did that. But like I put it, I, I made I tried. I basically got them all back because I was like, what was I thinking? Let me let me go back. Let me let me, you know, I feel like, yeah, yeah, it, it's. So would you say so so you mentioned you mentioned a couple of I would say I don't know if they're bad pieces of advice but maybe things that have slowed you down a little bit uh so deleting your music collection you also mentioned that oh don't want to do reading cuz that might mess up my accent uh yeah I I'm so glad I missed that one cuz <laughs> reading <laughs> yeah. reading is pretty great um w- w- any any other traps you got caught in along this Japanese journey Mm, well, I don't know if it's a trap, so to speak, because I, I, I think uh, it's true. Like, obviously, the, mm-hmm. the, the further along you push out uh, when you start outputting, uh, the easier it'll be to output and it'll, you'll sound better and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think I took it like so too hard that I've just created a mental barrier and I just can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I, I know I can break through it if I, one I decide I want to try to do it. But uh, that's definitely something that uh, if I had that it just a little bit here and there uh, throughout my journey, at least I wouldn't have that barrier. Mm. So I mean, when it comes to output, uh, this was something uh, PM me your fave waifu from Reddit posted. <laughs> uh, how, how are you working? Of course, that's from Reddit. <laughs> How how is it? Uh, how how do you plan to work towards output? And have you started? What's been your experience with that? So I haven't started whatsoever, okay. um, and it, it's something I want to do, but I I don't feel rushed to do it. Mm. So I'm just gonna wait it out for now. Uh, but I think sometime next year, not in the beginning, but maybe like halfway through uh, 2022, 
I think is next year. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, maybe at that point, and and the way I'm gonna do it, I'm just gonna start by uh, writing or I guess typing. Mm. Uh, so that way, um, I can take the time to think about what I'm writing yeah. and correct and, and correct it and everything. And I think by doing that, it might help me uh, actually like break that barrier and then. Uh, activate the knowledge mm -hmm. in my brain so to speak and i think from there i'll see where i'll go but I, that should be fine after that mm -hmm. so sometime next year is that based on like are you going to like use hello talk or like what what's your like do you have a plan really or is it just like when you like i guess how do you know when you get there if that makes sense uh, i i well, for now, I've just uh, taken the approach of uh, reevaluating my goals every couple of months, mm, okay. and I'm just thinking that if uh, my my current goal, like uh, the the reading ReZero for fun thing, uh, I think by the end of the year I'll I'll be uh, done with that, and then I want to actually enjoy reading light novels and get back to catching up on manga and stuff like that for a couple of months, and so that's why I'm saying uh, halfway through next year because I think after that is when I'm gonna get into it. Makes and uh, I think I'm just at first I'm just gonna because I already follow some uh, Japanese Twitter accounts, so I think I'm just gonna be uh, reading those and replying to some. And I even have another a separate Twitter account which I don't use at all now, but uh, just for that. So at least I have it already. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. What What about you, Jordan? Are you any any updates since last time on where you're headed with output? I know you're thinking about getting um, the Hello Talk. Any action on that? I. Yeah, no, not really for as far as um, Hello Talk. I did uh, not this past week, but the week before I went to a Japanese meetup. Okay. It was uh, just on Zoom. Um, so, And I've been to it before, um, caught up with some old friends. Um, I didn't, I, I said maybe, you know, self-introduction into like some of the newer people and then like talked about what I've been doing these past, like, you know, me finding a job, mm -hmm. me trying to find a job, me, you know, things like that. So it wasn't like, you know, telling my whole life story but it's like it felt good you know to listen to actual like native speak it you know people who i knew and to speak a little bit so like if an opportunity is there and i have time i might go for it but like i haven't said any dedicated like okay today i'm gonna go x or tomorrow i'm gonna speak with this tutor so mm -hmm. nothing nothing crazy like that i think if there's opportunities there i say like go for it like me personally that's what my motto has been like if i have time to do it and it's not like you know anything crazy sure but like i don't go out of my way so much gotcha i think yeah my, my plan on this is i mean I've, I've already done my fair share of output and then since i came back from japan though like i i, I don't because i don't have a reason to uh so Damn. i'm thinking when i want to start using it which i i'm sure i will at one some point i probably just want to get into some clubs like like doing things with with other people around what oh that kind of club <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know what sort of clubs yet. Uh, so it, it's going to have to be something I'm interested in. So I don't know if it's going to be, I don't know, programming, game development, shogi, you name it. I, I don't know yet, yeah. but I, I'll yeah. have to find, I don't know, some Tuchan board to start it with and then find something <laughs> a little more involved. But uh, that, I, I would think that's how I would probably approach it still. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't have a real concrete plan there because I'm, I'm just, it, it's not something I really care too much about so far. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see, Japan Code. What, uh, this is another question from Reddit. DJ D D Dog, uh says, what sort of plateaus have you hit uh, along your journey? And what do you do to get out of those? Hmm. I've hit, I guess you could say I've hit a lot of plateau <laughs> plateaus. Um, Master of the plateaus, well, some would say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the serial restarted and master of plateaus. <laughs> it's got a ring to Not it. Not titles you want to have. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, I, I guess um, I've, I, I, I can't really give examples as to where they were because mm. I don't necessarily realize it. It's right. just, it kind of has an ebb and flow to mm. it. It just sometimes you'll be going straight, sometimes up, down. But uh, to get out of it, usually you just have to make some changes to your habits or um, try to go for something more challenging. See, like no, normally for me, the plateaus is when I kind of settle into something and stop uh, striving to get better. So mm -hmm. if I get into that mentality, it's uh, it's a sign that I have to uh, switch up something, uh, anything but something. Yeah, I completely agree with that. So, so let's talk about that. Like how, 
is, is there a way that you're tracking your progress um so so that you can see you know like when when are you you know not moving forward at the rate that you want or something like that so for the most part, most part i haven't tracked anything uh, but this year I did start tracking, like after seeing all of uh, Stevie's tracking and a lot of people joining in, uh, I'm not using his spreadsheet. I have my own simplified, very easy uh, spreadsheet because I, I, I know if I try to track too much, I'm just going to give up on yeah. it. Uh, but I'm, I'm tracking just uh, my, my active time, uh, uh, no, not active time, uh, reading time, listening time, unkey time and uh, passive time. And that's it. Uh, well, I guess reviews and, and uh, new cards, but that's it. Uh, and then I just check what my average per day is and how it changes over time and see. Uh, that's how I know that I've been uh, successfully improving my average time per day uh, recently. Nice. So mm, that's really it. Where, where are you at with, uh, I, I know you talked about it a little bit at the beginning. Uh, any, any other pieces you'd like to share around? that growth and where you're at now like how many hours a day and that sort of thing uh yeah so i i guess for this month uh well i guess i'll compare to last month uh, last sure. month uh, i did in total uh, 85 hours of active japanese nice. and i wasn't doing any passive yet i only uh, got back into it this month okay. so zero passive <laughs> Uh, but this month so far, I'm at uh, 96 hours of active and uh, 29 hours of passive. So it's uh, a lot more yeah. already. Nice. Um, and that's an average of uh, about 3.5 hours a day. So on work days, I'd say maybe three hours and then weekends more like five or six hours uh, on average. I did have that one day where I did 13 hours. Of I saw active, that. But that was a challenge. So. I, was, I, I, I was proud of you in that moment. I said, he's, he's, thank you, thank he's you. going for it. So like, I, have, I have a question about that. When yeah. when that, and for you as well, Kanjita, like, I feel like when I, I haven't done it in a while. And it hasn't happened in a long time. But I feel like when I if, when that happens and I have a, an opportunity to increase my immersion, I feel like, I dream, I'll have dreams in Japanese. I feel like mm. when it's like it, it's above that threshold, it's like, oh wow, I've I've you know been in comp you know in contact with so much Japanese that like I have a dream in Japanese. It hasn't happened probably in the last like two years or two to three years or so, but like when it does, I'm like, whoa, it, it, it's like an almost out of body experience. I don't know, has that happened to either of you? Go ahead, Japan code. Not me. You've not you don't uh, dream I, in Japanese. Not, well, I don't really dream in languages. Mm. Mm. Uh, I don't hear any language when I'm dreaming. Well, first of all, it's rare that I even remember a dream. But when I do, there's normally not any language. Strictly interpretive uh, dance? I guess. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Minus the dance part. <laughs> it's more like raw meaning that I'm getting from it. Hmm. So, yeah. That's very interesting. Uh, yeah, so I, I definitely dream in languages. Uh, and I've had... Uh... <laughs> I, I have had Japanese dreams. I remember at the beginning, there would be just like weird made up words that weren't even Japanese. And I was like, I got right. to look that up. And like, oh, yeah, my subconscious yeah. brain has no idea what's going on. And uh, correct. But I, I, it's probably triggered by the amount that I'm doing in a day. But I, I haven't really related it to that. It just it just happens sometimes. Do you listen while you sleep sometime to Japanese? Heck no, that's that's a ridiculous <laughs> yeah, okay, good, idea. Good, good, good. That's I another bad idea. I, I got tried yeah. that. I tried okay. it, but it, it was terrible. It was not like like four hours in, I was like, oh, this is a yeah. joke. Like this is not <laughs> this is never gonna work. Like and then I tried to switch it to like even like calmer like music or podcasts. And like even then it was like, okay, I kind of like it's easier to to lay here. It's not like I'm sleeping. So yeah, nah, it doesn't work for me. What what about you? Japan code. Oh no, same, same. Okay. Uh, at, at best, I can listen to maybe some ASMR, mm -hmm. but even then, usually, if there's anyone speaking, it just makes me not uncomfortable. It just it 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 makes it hard to fall asleep for me. I know you've talked a little bit about your struggles with sleep in general, your battle against it. Yeah. Are you winning yet? Uh, actually, yeah, it's been getting better. Okay. Uh, for for quite a while, I was averaging maybe like six hours of sleep per night, which for me is not enough whatsoever. Uh, but the past week or two, it's been more like seven to seven and a half. Mm -hmm. 
which is better. Basically, the main difference is I haven't been getting up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. Mm. Uh, on, but last night, actually, it happened, and then it took me two hours to fall back asleep. So, Oof. you know, I still haven't figured it out. <laughs> yeah. But it's getting better as a trend. So. That's that's good. I, what's the difference that you're noticing between, you know, times when you get up proper amounts versus not? Like, what differences are you seeing? I'm way more productive when I sleep better. Yeah. Uh, like this morning, like I said, uh, I had the, the, the issue this night. And it took, it took me a good two two to three hours to even get started with Japanese mm. in the first place. Well, I, I guess not with Japanese, but with actually paying attention to it. Because I had it going on, but I wasn't really like focusing. Mm -hmm. um, whereas when, when I sleep properly, after like maybe half an hour, I can start focusing properly and I'm good mm -hmm. to go. I, you, you've mentioned, I mean, we're, we're talking about habits and uh, other ways that you're improving your concentration. How, I, how are you doing with that, like improving your concentration? What, what things have you found useful for that piece of it? Mm. Well, some, sometimes just going in shorter bursts, instead of trying to do like a full hour, just allowing yourself a minute or two to, when you're not focusing, just, okay, I'm going to stop, just look elsewhere, go look out the window or check a notification or something. Uh, actually, no, notification makes it worse, so <laughs> not that. <laughs> actually, yeah, the, the times where I actually um, like log out of social media is usually uh, the best. Because, uh, well, I already don't have notifications, but just knowing that I can just quickly open a new mm -hmm. tab, press E, press enter, and I'm on Twitter, mm -hmm. uh, that changes everything. My my wife gave me an interesting little uh, tip that, that she tried the other day. She, so we, we've been watching the new Attack on Titan, and she she, mm -hmm. she watches a lot of the uh, the Attack on Titan memes on Instagram, which it's some bottom tier stuff, if I'm being honest. I hope she's not listening. <laughs> Um, but she, uh, she, she says, well, I was getting spoilers, so I just deleted my account. And then I was like, you deleted your, your entire Instagram account? And she's like, yeah. And it was like, so, so you don't have one now? And she's like, no, I can log back in. Okay. Okay. So wait a minute, wait a minute. You deleted your account. Now you're logging back in just so, it, it, why didn't you just log out? Like, what's the difference? She's like. No, it's commitment. It's commitment. I didn't want any spoilers for Attack on Titan, so I deleted my account. So there you go, folks. If you, it, 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 maybe if you're running into distractions, just delete your account. Of uh, if it's a Facebook thing, like you can probably get it back. So there you go. I've taken it off my phone, all social Same. media. Yeah. Like no, it's on my phone, and then I log off on the computer on both Facebook, really? like anything, anything. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's yeah. like that way because it's like, like you said, I'll just jump on and be like, oh, new tab. Look at that. I'm right back where mm -hmm. I started. Or like. I'll open a new tab even though I was already there already. It's like, wait, yeah. I'm already in Twitter. Why am I opening? I'm like, this is an issue. This is a problem. I got to get out of here. There's a pretty good book I read on that called uh, Digital Minimalism uh, by Cal Newport. And he talks kind of about just like recalibrating all of the digital tools that you're using and just like going like kind of cold turkey without them for a while. Um, I mean, I didn't do that. I didn't, I didn't actually take the advice in the book. But I, it did it did make me think through a little bit about like how often am I mindlessly scrolling through a feed? And I've become consciously aware of that where it's like, oh, this is a mindless activity. I need to just close this and move on. Yeah. And honestly, for me, that's that seems to be enough that I'm not checking like more than once a day, just being aware. Yeah. Dopamine detox. That was also something that I listened, uh, looked into. That's what uh, Mo Mali just said in the chat. Um, Thanks, Mali. I, I looked into it. and. I couldn't find a bunch of like like credited studies for it, but it does seem like it would have potential because you get you get so used to getting these quick dopamine fixes from yeah. doing very little work and that's that's what they cover in that book as well that I was mentioning. And like big companies make money off of that. So they're not in it for your best interest. They're, you know, they want yeah. you to keep scrolling, so they make it as addicting as possible. So yeah, got to keep that in mind. Uh, so, so what other yeah. habits uh, are essential to your progress, uh, Japan Code? Uh, I, I, I'd say that the most essential for me is uh, getting up early. Okay. Uh, but it's not it's not so much about uh, the time of the day being early, but rather the amount of time before work. So, if I worked uh, later in the right. day, then I could get up later. That wouldn't affect me as long as it's a couple of hours before I have to leave. Uh, like right now. Uh, I think Jordan, you have a light alarm too, uh, alarm with a light. Yeah. So yeah. 
I started using that and my range is from 3.30 to 4 a.m. So that's when I, that's the range of time when I usually get up uh, because I leave for work at 6.15 in the morning. So that gives me a good two hours, two hours and a half to actually uh, do stuff when my brain is at, you know, before being dead from work. Yep. Right. <laughs> So waking up early, that's funny because that is what the first episode of the Deep Weeb podcast is because I completely agree. That's one of the most <laughs> fundamental things. Uh, what other things have you encountered that uh, have helped you out along this? Hmm. That's actually going to sound, sound kind of, uh, I guess, stupid at first. But the very first habit I built was uh, making my bed in the morning. Okay. And... Good. The the reason for that uh, that that it worked for me is well first of all it's so simple it takes ten seconds and it's done, uh, but also it just starts your day uh, right because the ten seconds into your day you've done your first habit and mm -hmm. it's positive so you're starting on a positive mm -hmm. note. Uh, I don't know at this point if it still does anything to me, but it's a habit. So it, I just I've been doing this for probably eight years now and haven't missed a single day. Mm -hmm. That book, Atomic Habits, talks about just the idea of uh, that it's easier to chain your habits. Like if, if you want another habit, then set a habit, right? And then build one off yeah, of exactly. one that Chaining. exists. Yep. So yeah, I mean, yeah. that, that does make sense. And, and that's that's interesting. I never thought of just kind of giving yourself a, an, an easy 10 second one to jumpstart your day. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. Um, so any habits uh, that, that you've built up over the years that have changed over time, like what how have your habits changed through the uh, Japanese journey? That's another question from uh, our boy Mobile Mali. Uh, I think the way my habits change is that they disappear. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> uh, I, I don't think I have any specific havoc, uh, habit that I've stuck with but modified. Mm. So nor normally, uh, like, like for example, if I take the making my bed one, mm -hmm. it's been exactly uh, the same way. Uh, this whole time mm -hmm. uh, but if i try to build a habit let's say of uh, reading for half an hour every morning mm -hmm. uh, it would either keep that way i would do it at the exact same time every day or i would just not have the habit anymore uh, so in that way they don't actually change but what habits i have do change obviously um, like right now uh, i've been uh, building the habit of when I wake up, I grab my headphones and my iPad before going to the bathroom. That way I can immerse in there. Whereas before I wasn't, so I wasn't doing any immersion. I was just browsing social media and that's kind of a bad way to start your day. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I, I guess, I guess, yeah, that's more it. I'm just starting new habits and then if they stick, great. If they don't, I try to see why and if maybe it was just not the right thing for me or maybe there's just something I can change like maybe the trigger for it is not constant enough or something like that but let's say if your trigger is the sun the sun rising well if it's raining then it, the sun's not going to mm. rise you know well it will but you won't see it yep. <laughs> yeah yeah this the sun does in fact still rise <laughs> yeah <laughs> spoiler alert <laughs> so uh let, let's talk about uh, working a full-time job while doing this intense immersion schedule over an hour a day typically like how have you managed to balance that out? I know I know we talked a little bit before the show about there haven't been a whole lot of people that we've seen talk about this. It seems like a lot of people when they're starting off, uh, maybe they're still in school or they have a little bit more flexible schedules. So what's that been like yeah. What uh, working a full-time job with a uh, full-time immersion? Well, it, it, at first it was definitely a struggle because, uh, you know, you kind of, well, at first I wasn't uh, getting up earlier before work so when i'd get back home i would never want to do it and uh, that's one of the things that uh, happened a lot in my uh, previous uh, failed attempts is that i would not end up doing japanese because i was too tired from work um so that's why i, I think getting up earlier uh, whatever the time just earlier than your needed time mm -hmm. is so helpful um and as far as managing it's just a question of uh, trying to fit in uh, finding all the holes where you can actually fit more Japanese. Like, for example, I, I take the bus uh, to work. So in the bus, I can actually immerse, you know, it's it's a great time. You you, you don't have to focus on anything. You're not the one driving. So uh, thankfully, I have one long bus. It's about 45 minutes. So I can watch like two anime episodes. Or what I've been doing recently is in the morning, 
uh, I'll read uh, light novels for 40 to 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then when I come back home, uh, yeah, when I go back home, I'll be watching uh, anime. So I'll get two episodes in and then I can just nice. uh, kind of balance it out this way. So the commute is a good time as well as starting off your morning with it. That way, when you're, you know, burn out from working a hard day in the coal mines like me, like you, you can just kind of take it a little bit easier. <laughs> Uh, yeah. What about you, Jordan? How how have you found balancing uh, the full time struggle with which I know you're in a bit of a between state right now, but you you have yeah, done it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's the same way. I think I I miss my commute. My commute was about same about forty five minutes, and like, you know, whether I needed to you know read or take a nap or whatever, it's like I. I got that time to, to, you know, do that. So fitting Japanese in where I can, uh, definitely in the mornings, um, like, like you both, both of you guys said, you know, getting it out of the way. I feel like it's, it's taking care of me before I take care of everybody else, mm -hmm. before I go to work, before I, you know, t turn on my phone or do anything else. It's like, nah, this is for me. This is my time. And it's like, you know, getting up in the morning, an hour in advance, two hours in advance before going into work. I, I, cannot say enough like it's perfect i love it you know this is this is something that i picked up on the topic from it was actually probably from that book that digital minimalism one um the idea that uh, kind of I instead of doing a lot of breaks throughout the day of doing things like oh well i'm just going to check this gaming news site or something like that i completely stopped doing that for the most part and just put it all off to the weekend because in the weekdays, I have less control over my time. Like I might have to work a long day. Um, I might get called back in uh, because software engineering, sometimes something breaks and then I have to jump in yeah. and fix it. Um, so because there's much less control over my time in the days, I need to minimize the amount of potential distractions. But at the same time, you know, everybody knows as well as I do that if you just say, well, I'm just go never going to look at a gaming news site again. Like that's yeah. the best way to guarantee you're going to be on that site every day. So right. it's like, okay, well, I'll just do it on the weekends for a shorter amount of time. And honestly, it's, it's just given me back a lot of time that otherwise I don't think I would have because I get distracted. So, I mean, it's made me a little bit quieter on social media, but I mean, this is the year to get good. So that's, uh, right. that, that's where I'm at with I it. I try to do it. Like if, if I give myself like 10 like no more than 20 minutes, like t uh, just scouring, yeah. answering questions, replying to other people, you know, I think that's perfect. Mm -hmm. And then getting off of it. And then I've even started to like, it's not, it's, it sounds silly, but it's like plan my social media posts yeah. or like yeah. whatever I'm thinking. I'm like, Oh, I've been doing that. I think yeah. it would be good. Like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it'd be cool to like ask everybody what, what they think. So it's like, all right, I'll write this down. And then like later I'll be like, Hey, what do you guys think about such and such? And it's like easier that way because it's like, I get to write it down, jot it down. It's it's out of me, like physically. Yep. It's like okay, that that cathartic feeling, and then it's like oh, I can post it later. Or if like ah, eh, never mind, I don't really care. It's like you know the feeling fades, and and you know that's been great. That's a good point. A any any other thoughts on that topic? Uh, the Japan Code uh, balancing that work life struggle. No, I think uh, that was pretty much it. I mean, uh, after work too, I I don't have a lot of time after work because I get home. Uh, at 5.45 and then I go to bed between 7 and 7.30. Mm -hmm. So I take that time to take that needed uh, break if I need to. So I'll, I'll, I'll do Japanese then. Uh, I'll take some some Japanese that I can relax to, like maybe some chill YouTube video or, or a, a, a relaxing slice of life anime or something like that. Mm -hmm. But if I don't feel like it, then that's fine. I'll just watch some English YouTube or whatever. It's, uh, it's the time when I'm not going to be uh, as productive. So it's fine if I take my break at that time. Uh, that's what I've been uh, learning to allow myself to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I know one thing that you mentioned, I think it was in your last update video, just the idea of getting back into gaming and then getting sucked way deep into gaming and pulling yourself back. Uh, where yeah. have you ended up on the uh, the gaming piece? Uh, I ended up on the mostly not playing side. Okay, okay. Because <laughs> it's really hard. Um, well, I, I am playing a, a little bit of uh, Monster Hunter World at the moment, cool. uh, but I'm only I'm limiting myself, first of all, to weekends, not on the week, uh, not even after work, mm -hmm. uh, because then uh, I, I know I won't want to go to bed. Yeah. 
Uh, and then even on the weekend, uh, I wait till after 1 p.m. So I'll give myself the from 4 to uh, 1, 4 a.m. to 1 p.m. where I can't do any sort of uh, gaming, except I guess if I was uh, playing a visual novel, because that, that's more text than anything. Agreed. Yep. Um, and uh, then after 1 p.m., if I want to game, I can. And so far, it's been working well. I usually play maybe two to three hours uh, each weekend day. And then after that, I'm just like, I want to get back into Japanese and then I go back and do some more Japanese. It was a, it's a, I use it more as a nice break than anything. But if I went back to playing Final Fantasy 14, I don't think I'd be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that's awesome. Cause I mentioned in the last episode that like this year, I'm going to try to just basically go without gaming entirely. And I, I, I already made one exception, and I'm curious how that's going to work out um, because I'm <laughs> going to play through uh, SMT Nocturne in in Japanese, mm -hmm. but I it's like it's been on my list for forever. I already started it. I don't want to have to pick it up in a year, but it's like, yeah, like I would like to just stick with some denser material. I also will say I went in Japan. I, I didn't I p barely played any video games the whole time I was there. I was there for six months and I was just mm -hmm. like don't want to spend my time playing games over here um yeah so so took advantage made the most of the time that i had over there and then so i was like okay well if i could go basically six months without playing could i go a year without playing and i, I remember at the end of that six month period of just saying no uh to, to games and it was like as soon as i got back i played dead space in english and i was just like oh this is great i mean it was banned in japan that game so i was like ah <laughs> suck it guys so as it was good to <laughs> good to get through that one but it was one of those things like it quickly took over more time through Japanese habits. So it's, it's interesting that you say you kind of section it off because that's that's also what I was doing. I found when I was trying to play games, I found that even just doing it on the weekends, it just didn't feel like enough. So I was doing it for like one hour every evening. But then that s s quickly crept into sleep yeah, time quickly. So then it was like I mentioned in the last video, like as soon as I as I just started doing all Anki all the time for a little bit, it was like there wasn't any time for games. And then since then, it's like, okay, well, I can probably just go for a while without. And that's that's kind of where I'm sticking with it for now. We'll see how this ends up. Um, because I know that you mentioned this was one of the ways that you kind of, well, I don't know if you'd say that that would be like a plateau that you hit when it was just like all games, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mo most of the plateaus were, were because of that. Okay. Because <laughs> well, one thing is uh, the way I learned English was mostly through playing RuneScape right. and, and watching YouTube videos about the game, mm -hmm. talking to people about the game. And uh, it's a, it's a, uh, I played for like six to eight years, something like that. And so it, it's an actual addiction. And I, I keep like telling myself or uh, like, you know, oh, it's been years, you can do it again, you know, and every time I do it, uh, for a week, it's fine. I'll be like, yeah, just an hour a day. It's fine. Second week, eh, two hours a day. And then after that, it's mm. the whole day. So I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> so so just Mally in chat asks, why don't I just play uh, games in Japanese? And I am playing games in Japanese for the most part. Yeah. It's just they're not as dense as other materials. That doesn't mean like I, I totally want to play some Tales games. But right now I'm pushing that yes. off to next year so that I can just keep leveling up where i'm at because there are plenty of other more interesting dense materials that i want to get through so i don't mind i i don't mind immersing with the content i am right now at least that's my story right now we'll see how that ends up in a year what about you jordan yeah oh no go ahead yep. japan code no go ahead. no you can go you can go <laughs> for me it's it's i i also have a, it's like it's hard for me to be like no you can't play games like yeah this is, it is hard. it's like that's that's the, one of the yeah, main reasons as to like why I got into Same. it. It's like, oh, wow. So it's like, but the way I've been balancing it is I have to, I've got to, I've got to been able to do something productive first. So it's like I had to have added new cards to Anki or read some articles for an hour or done something like, you know, in the direction of like, okay, I read something dense. Mm. Then playing it for a half hour, a little bit here and there. It's yeah. like, you know, that that'll give me that little boost. And nine times out of ten during the week, I'm gonna get sleepy anyways. So I'm gonna play it for a little bit and then be like, oh, okay, I'm tired. And so <laughs> like uh, just but I feel like I know telling myself, no, you can't do this is an instant way for like yep. the the smaller version of me <laughs> to be like, Oh yeah, really? I'm I'm gonna do it anyway. It's like the was like the little kid everybody's yeah. like everybody's parent. It's like, oh yeah, that's not gonna happen. Telling myself no for without a good reason, it's like it's an instant way to be like, Oh, okay, I'm gonna do this all night. Yeah. So 
I have to try to, for me, it's like, make it make sense to myself. She'd be like, this is why I'm saying no because of this. And then I'm like, oh, okay, I can get behind it. Hmm. So, yeah, for, for the, 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 the why not play Japanese games uh, part of it, uh, I, I am, besides RuneScape, I'm talking about Japanese games too. And the thing is, uh, for example, like Final Fantasy XIV, which I did have uh, uh, issues with, uh, there's a lot of story to it, but I find myself wanting to rush through the story so I can get back to the gameplay, which has no Japanese. Yeah. Uh, because to me, uh, yeah. I, I love a good story in a game, but... I'm not going through it as fast as if it was in English because I'm not as good in Japanese as I am in English. And because of that, uh, I tend to rely on the, the gameplay part of it to find it fun, but that's the part that's not as good for Japanese. Yep. So that's why I, I, I want to limit uh, how much uh, gaming I do. Mm -hmm. That's also what I realized playing through Nocturne is just like, oh, there's a lot of grinding in this, plus I'm streaming it. So... And I was trying to still do it as much as I could. Like, oh, like I'm. This is my chance to do real time translations. Like, that's that's a mm. that's an interesting skill to develop. So I don't mind doing it. Uh, but it's yeah. still it's not as dense as it could be. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I do have plans though for that because uh, like we were talking earlier about outputting. Mm -hmm. One of the things I want to do when I do uh, start like uh, speaking is uh, I want to, you know, actually stream in Japanese and make Let's yeah. Plays and videos in Japanese. So that's a way that, yeah. uh, that's how I'm I'm allowing myself to push uh, gaming off is because when I get to that point, I'll be able to game and talk at the same time, which mm -hmm. makes it productive. Yep. I completely, yeah, that, that sounds like a really Agreed. fun plan for it. So that's cool. Yeah, exactly. No, um, I, I, that's the I, point. <laughs> I do kind of want to do the same word, like, especially when like new games come to Japan first. It's yeah. like, oh, let me do like a live, you know, translation. But it's like, I know, I already know my Japanese is not where it needs to be for that to be able mm -hmm. to, you know, effectively, efficiently, you know, communicate that. So, yeah. On the back. So, uh, Japan Code, as far as habits, personal development, uh, specifically on the personal development side of it, what does personal development look like for you throughout this process? Mm, well, for, for me, I guess, uh, personal development, uh, I'm, I'm taking really the, the personal part of it in the sense that, uh, it, the, the goal is to become like kind of the, I guess the best version of yourself, mm -hmm. but based on your own values, not of based on what other people think you should be doing or, uh, anything like that so uh well actually i can't i, I can't <laughs> i have no example coming to mind right now but uh yeah that's basically it it's a tool like if there's things i want to do then i'll use uh, self-discipline and personal development to yeah. get me to that point because i know uh, that future me is going to be happy that i made this sacrifice in the less important stuff to reach that point are, are there anywhere you look for because for me, one of the biggest breakthroughs I found as an adult and figuring out how to be an adult, um, it was audiobooks. And I was using English audiobooks and just like getting a topic that I was interested in and then just going deep on that for a little bit to figure out how I should be doing um, things in different areas. What, what are your mediums through which you're, you know, getting new ideas? <laughs> Um, there's not many at the moment, okay. <laughs> uh, but I, I'd say most of the ideas I, I, I have a bit on uh, personal development come from like Reddit, like the, the self-development subreddit, mm -hmm. something like that, and uh, a, a couple of uh, English YouTube channels like uh, Improvement Pill and uh, uh, Matt Diavella and stuff okay. like that, people like yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what about you, Jordan? Any, how, how are you balancing that out? Um, for me, it's, uh, trying to just keep in the, the, you know, forefront of my mind or even just every day, like, like what are my goals? Like, what are the things that I want? What are the things that I want to achieve with, with Japanese, with coding, with whatever it's like, am I, you know, trying like daily, am I making those strides? Even if it's like, you know, half a step, am I making, doing actions that are working me towards this goal? You know, and, and that's kind of what I try to do. And, 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 and then let's say if I don't meet those goals like that day, it's like, okay, instead of like, which I've done in the past, like, oh man, like, come on, man, you're better than this. It's like beat myself too much. It's like, okay, well, why, what was the reasoning? Why? Okay. Well, I didn't get sleep. Oh, I didn't do my night routine yesterday. Oh, okay. That's why. Let me try to make sure I do it today. You know, things like that. So it's like really kind of focusing on like, 
why I'm doing these things rather than like, oh, you did these things. You're bad. You know, mm -hmm. That's what's been recently helping me. Are, are there any streams of ideas you're plugging into? Mm, so Atomic Habits. So like, mm -hmm. what do you mean? Yeah, yeah. Just it? like mediums through which like Japan uh, Code mentioned like Reddit and things like that. Uh, I mean, um, yeah. Not necessarily Reddit per se, but definitely um, audiobooks have been my thing, um, mm -hmm. in English and in Japanese. So in the morning, if I can help it, I'll maybe like watch, listen to an audiobook as I like walk around the block for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's a easy, mm -hmm. you know, get myself waked up, listen to some good stuff. Um, but, you know, reading self-help books or books about things like that, like uh, Atomic Habits, that's a good one um, for sure. And then um, Setting Boundaries is one by this therapist it's called like setting boundaries finding peace it's like mm -hmm. oh whoa like setting boundaries with your family your friends things like that and like knowing that like that's how you you know that's how you grow so yeah um that's really about it i try to plug that in maybe 10 pages a day max or something like that mm -hmm. not not an overboard but i think it's good to to get some form you know somewhere. gotcha i i mentioned on the last video i'll just say it again this year, I dropped audiobooks in English, and so there's no personal development. I assume by the, the end of this year, I'm going to be an awful person. But you know what? <laughs> My Japanese is going to be good, so it's going to be worth it. Um, so how about, how about Anki, uh, the Japan code? Mm -hmm. How do you feel about Anki? I, I had a rocky start with it. Let, let's just put it that way. Uh, so I, I started, uh, again, I'm just talking about this specific uh, attempt is what I call it since uh, 2018. Uh, I started back when uh, people were all doing RTK the traditional way, writing everything by hand mm -hmm. and uh, doing like two hours, two hours and a half of Anki per day. Uh, and by the time I finished RTK, uh, I kept up with the reviews for a couple of months until I just deleted all of them. Yeah. I didn't even suspend, just straight up delete. I didn't want to see anything <laughs> from oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my club. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, as I was doing that, I did. I, I went through Take Him and actually uh, made sentence cards uh, from that. And when I started sentence mining, I did like maybe 500 cards and then I just stopped. And for two years after that, in those two years in total, I did... 2000 cards and that's about it so mm -hmm. that's 1000 card per year that's not a lot uh, most days i wasn't doing any and then once in a while i'll be like yeah i'll get back into anki and then i, I did it for a week and then i'd stop again yeah. <laughs> but uh, recently in the past uh couple of months well i guess since end of december um since, since i started really getting into reading so with uh, visual novels and now light novels uh and also with uh, how easy it is nowadays to make cards with uh, so many different possibilities. Uh, I'm specifically using the Migaku ones. Um, it's just so easy to actually make cards uh, that I actually enjoy it. Uh, I do it while immersing instead of having dedicated time yeah. to uh, making cards, which is what I used to do. That makes a big difference. Uh, I but now it, it takes like 10, 15 seconds. Yep. Yeah, as, as you're immersing, just mm -hmm. I look up the word, uh, look up the next word. That, oh, I want to make a card of this this one. 10 seconds, the card is make and made, and I can keep immersing. Um, I kind of forgot where I was going with this. <laughs> talking about how we feel about Anki. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, um, and also uh, I took, uh, again, I've mentioned a couple of times RuneScape. The, the thing that made me uh, addicted to it was uh, the whole seeing the numbers grow, getting mm -hmm. XP and grinding for the numbers to grow. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm tracking, I'm also tracking the new cards and uh, uh, how many reviews I'm making. So I'm getting addicted to seeing those numbers grow. Go. And I, I took I took the bad addiction and made it a good addiction. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. I also so now I love yep. it. I, I found that too. Like the stat tracking is is kind of one of those things that can keep you going. Um, yeah. So how important would you say Anki is when it comes to learning Japanese? Uh, I. I separate it in uh, two aspects. Uh, is it necessary to reach uh, whatever goals you have in language learning? No, but it speeds it up so much that if you want to do it in a, a reasonable amount of time, you almost have to use Anki. Mm. Like with English, uh, like I said earlier, I learned it unintentionally. Uh, so when I started at 12, uh, well, technically 11, 
uh, I did the equivalent of take him through school. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it was just unintentionally. So I was barely looking anything up. I was definitely not using Anki. Uh, I don't even know if it existed back then. It probably did. <laughs> but uh, anyways, I didn't know about it. So it, it before I reached the point where I considered myself fluent in English, and English is pretty similar to French uh, compared to Japanese, sure. uh, it took about eight years. Mm. Uh, which that's what stevie said as well Anki. for his Warcraft yeah exactly binge. yep yeah exactly <laughs> so i i think if i used donkey i could have done it way faster mm -hmm. and so in that sense i think it's pretty uh, useful and almost mandatory to use something like anki mm -hmm. if you want a uh, result in a decent amount of time so how, how would you describe your anki card format are you you're using only sentence cards are there yeah. any only sentence cards, okay. nothing else. Okay. And <laughs> so when I originally started, I, I tried doing some audio cards with a sentence uh, audio on the front and then the text on the back. Okay. And uh, that lasted like a week. And then I went back to regular text. Uh, because the thing for me, Anki, uh, I see Anki as something to prime your brain to notice words in your immersion. I completely rather agree than with actually... that. Yep. But yeah, that's the thing. So, so, so to me, I, I'm not trying to learn words in Anki. I'm just trying to prime myself by learning those words kind of, well maybe not learning is not the the right word here here but so because of that uh, one thing like vocab cards uh, i personally don't like them mm -hmm. <laughs> i've tried it but uh i find them too hard which mm. a lot of people say is a good thing because it tests your uh, recognition or or like remembering the word properly mm -hmm. but uh, for me uh, uh, if it's too hard i'm not going to enjoy it so mm -hmm. i'm not going to do it mm -hmm. and also uh, i actually enjoy like uh, finding a word in immersion and being I know this word I've seen it in my Anki I have it in my cards I don't remember what it is then I look it up and I oh yeah that mm. and now I remember it mm. so I, I like that it's kind of iffy when it leaves Anki mm -hmm. and then going into immersion yeah well, one one thing on that piece that I haven't heard anybody really talk about is like what you're talking about where you you made a card you forgot the card uh or yeah, you, you forgot what the word was that you were, you know, targeting on it. And then you found it in some other material. Now, what I've been doing recently for the last year or so probably is whenever that happens, I I find the card that, that's in Anki and I just add another image from whatever it was that I was doing. Mm. And so, so now like I know a lot of people recommend putting like an image on your card or something. A lot of my cards have like six images or something like that. And it's just like this collage <laughs> of experiences. And so that's that is one of the things that I have I've noticed over the last Are they on the front or the back? Always on the back. Always my my yeah, my front is back. just a vocab word these days. So okay. maybe maybe a sentence okay. for depending on mm -hmm. where it's appropriate. Um Got it. but yeah, so lots of images, lots of different manga that I've read that, you know, has crossed different pieces and slowly building out that neural network of different connections um so on the anki front uh how, how many cards are you adding a day these days or is that something you're consistently uh, doing or how's that look uh, kind of yeah uh, at the moment i'm mostly doing 10 to 15 uh but the past week it's been 15 almost every day Ooh. because there's a there's a part of me because right now i only have uh, 3750 ish cards okay. which after three years and a couple of months that's not a lot uh, so because of that i'm often pushed um, not pushed but i feel the urge to have more cards so i can reach that magical ten thousand, mm -hmm. which doesn't technically matter but like it uh, solved all I of my problems the... i haven't had a single problem <laughs> since i hit that number <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's it that's what that's why sometimes uh, i'll be doing 15 a day so if i have the cards available i'll just make 15 and so far the reps are still manageable like i haven't i i, I still don't want to spend more than half an hour per day on on key just yeah. because uh, i'm still kind of in the new honeymoon phase with it mm. so i don't want to go too hard and then burn out again yeah. so i'm limiting myself to 30 so if i reach 30 minutes and i only have uh, like 11 cards made then mm -hmm. i'll just stop there even if it's only two cards made i'll stop there for now mm -hmm. and then in a couple of months i'll see if you know do i want to stick with 15 a day and then go over 30 minutes or keep with a 30 minutes limit and see how it's going and how i feel gotcha are you enjoying what you're adding 
to Anki? Because it seems like just like based off like what you what you were saying in the past and you falling off, it seems like now is like you're more you're you're maybe being picky on what you're putting in the Anki. I I was for a little bit, but then uh, recently after talking with uh, Vandela and then also uh, listening to the the, the podcast episode with uh, Stevie, mm-hmm. I've just started adding. Every I plus Everything? one sentence. All that I the find. things. Okay. Uh, right, because at first right. I was really being picky. I was like, am I going to remember this word? Is this word useful? Is it like three stars or more in rarity? No, it's just it's zero stars. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. As long as the sent, uh, as long as with the definition I can understand it, I'll add it. Yep. Right. Right. Like okay. oh, okay. no more checklist to work through to know if I need to add this word. It's just yep, taking <laughs> exactly. it. Exactly. Yep. Looks good to me. It's a word I don't know. It's an I plus one sentence. Boom. To one key it goes. Yep. <laughs> See, if, if I, I've been doing that, but then with like any I plus word I find, I'll put in a donkey. But typically, I will put a picture with it. Now, mm-hmm. it's not a picture of like the words. Like if I'm reading an article about Pokemon, it would be like a like a picture of that. Like, you know how like the, the thumbnail of that article, mm-hmm. it'll be something like that where it's like, oh, this will for whatever reason, my I feel like my brain's like, yeah. Cool colors. I'll 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 learn this mm-hmm. more than like just text. And it's like my brain's like, nah, I don't really feel like it. If I see some color or pictures, like again, it doesn't have to necessarily even to do with what I'm reading. Yeah. It could just be like, oh, whatever the thumbnail is. And I'm like, oh, sweet. And like some pictures will be, I'll some I'll have multiple pictures, like the same picture for each word, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. So things like that have, have have helped me for sure. Yeah, your brain parses images faster than text that's just yeah. how our brains work so I, I find them more useful than definitions honestly right. oh yeah for sure uh even even for abstract ones i've heard people say oh well monolingual definition is going to be better for this like e- even if the image isn't that relevant like it's mm-hmm. still the first thing that i look at when i flip the card and it's still the thing that makes me recall the definition i don't i don't know how that works but that's how my brain works so <laughs> um so jumping into some uh, a couple of different topics uh we talked about quite a few things but you've also been to japan um and spent a little yeah. bit of time over there uh and this is from dj to dog again uh asking any crazy frightening exciting stories from visiting japan <laughs> well i don't have anything frightening thankfully yeah that's probably good <laughs> uh but i do have a, a couple of little stories so uh so first of all, just for context, uh, I went to Japan in 2014. It was for uh, two weeks and a half, and it was just traveling. I wasn't working or anything, just for 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 nice. fun. Um, so I didn't know any Japanese back then. I had uh, hiragana and katakana, but besides that, like I had only had a couple of uh, serial restarts that only lasted a couple of days. So I didn't know more than that at that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess I knew a couple of easy words, but uh, nothing more than that. So uh, when I went to uh, Fushimi Nari, which is uh, the the mountain shrine place in Kyoto that's famous for all the tori that it has, Mm. um, you're supposed to follow the path that has the tori on on them. There's like a thousand of them and they're bright orange and you cannot miss them. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Somehow I missed them. (laughs) That's funny. I did too. Keep going. Keep going. I did too. Really? Yes. (laughs) So I I went through the the first like five or ten of them. And then there was an arrow pointing to a side uh, side road. And I couldn't read what it said. But I'm like, there's an arrow. So maybe I should go there. Everyone's still going the the other way following the Tori gates. Mm -hmm. And I just took that arrow so i kept going and then the path uh, the, the 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 road became just a dirt road and then the dirt road became uh, a path where like people have walked in the grass and so you can see they walked there and uh at some point i was in some like little shrines that clearly no one had gone uh, in a while because they were full of spider webs well i mean people had gone there but not like tourists and stuff um, and then as i kept going at some point uh, i was walking uh, up the mountain in inside a forest with no one to be seen. I couldn't hear anyone or anything. And then as I went up, I just popped at the top where everyone was. I'm like, oh, I think I took the wrong route. <laughs> <laughs> but I found out later that there's a wild boar where I was. So I, I got lucky that I didn't run into oh, any. <laughs> yes, I, 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 I definitely made it through past the first 10 to 15 i was pretty deep in there but i similar story like oh went down in some woods and then came up and i was like oh well this is the top <laughs> so, 
Well, I don't know. We might have been on the same path there. And yeah, they're yeah, definitely maybe. wild boar uh, <laughs> that, that, that are over there. Um, so <laughs> any, any other uh, crazy, frightening, uh, exciting stories from today? Yeah, well, uh, there was one more that's kind of funny. So I was on my way to uh, uh, Koyasan, Mount Koya, which yeah. is uh, a place with a bunch of uh, Buddhist, uh, Buddhist temples up there. Been there too. And I was spending a night there. Oh, okay. What? I didn't do that. Oh, okay. Well, I, I did. Nice. But on the way there, uh, it's like maybe like three hours of taking different trains through the, the, the Inaka mm -hmm. uh, rural towns. And then at some point, I look outside and there's a building with graffiti on it that says, you're in Inaka. And I was like, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that, that was actually like, that took me by surprise because I was late and I was kind of stressed if it, they were going to take me and stuff. But that kind of calm me down because of how pointless that was <laughs> so so you made it and you spent spent the night with some uh, buddhist monks uh, yeah yeah why well, I, I i made it late but they still took me mm. in and i wasn't too late like uh, mm. i think the the latest check-in was uh, 5 p.m and i was at 5 20 <laughs> or something mm -hmm. but uh, going there was actually really awesome because you're going through really small towns uh, that uh, you know, your typical foreigners would not see. Yeah. And then you're also going through a, a cable car going up the mountain and you're passing through little cities that are built on the mountainside. So uh, like the, the your neighbor is like a whole house higher than you and mm -hmm. stuff. So it, it was really pretty. So uh, any any plans to go back to Japan here sometime? Uh, yeah, I do. Just not right now, because uh, at the moment, uh, I've uh, well, back in May last year, I moved back to my mom's place mm -hmm. uh, so I could uh, just, you know, work through some debts that I have to pay. Mm -hmm. And once that's done, I'm going to save uh, for uh, to go back to Japan, which should be uh, in two years from well, te technically two years from now, I should be in Japan if everything goes well. Nice. nice. Uh, actually. Uh, on on this day is the day I was coming back from Japan uh, seven years ago. Me. So <laughs> fun fact. <laughs> and then after that, uh, in another two years after that, so in four years, uh, uh, I want to do get a work holiday visa mm -hmm. uh, because I'm in Canada. So thankfully, I can do that. And uh, I, I want to make use of it because the time limit is at 30 years old. I'm currently 26. So in four years, I'm going to be 30 years old. So that's going to be my last year to do it. And exactly. that's basically what motivated me to, you know, go back to my mom's and pay my debts off so I can save yeah. up and do this literally once a lifetime possibility. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I know that was that was one of the things at the beginning of your videos. You were like, hey, I'm moving out. I'm, you know, get, getting a little bit more independence. And then you decided to move back. And <laughs> I'll be honest from the outside I, that seems like the responsible thing to do knowing that you have like a whole bunch of like debt looming that could take take out some of your future opportunities. Uh, yeah. How would you describe it? Right decision, wrong decision? Where are you at with that? It's the right tough decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, going from living alone to being not not only living with people but living with uh, with family uh, is uh, strange. I'd say it's mm -hmm. hard because uh, I've obviously changed uh, a lot since moving out. I've grown mentally a lot, uh, and obviously uh, my mom has changed too uh, in some ways. Less obviously because she's you know older and in her ways already. Mm -hmm. But it's been uh, hard to readjust. Uh, to the fact that I don't have privacy yeah. because it's still her home and she'll come in my room whether my door is closed or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so th that's something that's... Uh, I, I, let's just say I'm looking forward to moving back out. <laughs> but as a whole, it's uh, absolutely worth it and uh, we do get along pretty well although we don't spend much time together because I, I'm uh, more of a lone wolf and I want to work on Japanese and stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's been absolutely worth it and I've been making great progress. Awesome. Awesome to hear. So uh, let's see. What what other plans do you have for continuing with Japanese? Do you have any sort of like roadmap ahead of you of like where you're targeted, where you're headed with this? And uh, I don't have any specific plans. Uh, like I said, I'm just going to be reevaluating my goals every mm -hmm. couple of months and see if uh, I'm heading in the direction that I want. And if not, make adjustments. Um, I do know, like I said, uh, I want to do the uh, working holiday visa. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I'd like uh, to, you know, be basically fluent and or whatever my definition of fluency is. Yeah. And um, uh, basically, I, I, 
I know a lot of people uh, talk crap on it, but I do at that point want to take the JLPT just so I can put it on my resume. Sure. That's the only reason. Makes so sense. it's going to make it Same. easier to find jobs when I'm there. This, this whole yeah, JLPT yeah. shame culture, man. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and another thing I want to do when I, uh, I go to Japan for that year is I want to do the Shikoku pilgrimage. I don't know if you go, you guys know what that I is. That. <laughs> so it's the, the, the Shikoku island, right? And uh, the fourth biggest island of Japan. And there's a, a pilgrimage around it that's a thousand, uh, 1,200 kilometers long where you go and uh, visit 88 temples. Uh, mm. And I don't know why, but I, I got interested in it a couple of years ago, and mm -hmm. it's something I've had in the back of my mind, but never really thought I would actually do it. But now that I have a plan to go to Japan for a long period of time, I'm like, that's the best time to do it. Mm -hmm. And then as I'm doing it, well, first of all, it's a, it's a, it's a great uh, physical challenge. So uh, leading up to it, it's going to motivate me to take care of my health and uh, you know just get healthier as a whole and then as i'm doing it again it's going to be a challenge i'm going to be on my own walking for 50 to 60 days uh, with my thoughts so it's going to help me kind of uh, decide where i want to go in the future because after japanese uh, i have a couple of paths that i want to take and i don't know which one so i'm kind of taking that as my uh, graduation from learning japanese mm. so i'm hoping that by then i'll have uh, reached all, all of my goals uh, you, you've you've mentioned in the last update video, and uh, I think all of them just general progress with health. And so, where yeah. where are you at with that now? Uh, I'm getting uh, finally getting back into it because I had uh, it, basically with all my uh, uh, my downs in Japanese, like the moments where I'm uh, kind of burned out and not doing Japanese. It's because I'm burned out with everything, not just with Japanese. Mm. That's basically right. what it is. Yeah, yeah. So because of that, uh, I've gained back a lot of the weight that I had lost, and I've gotten back into energy drinks, sadly. And so I, but now I've de developed like a little bit of a step by step plan. So don't I don't want to make a big changes all at once. I want to mm -hmm. make a lot of smaller changes one at a time. Mm -hmm. And the first one I've been focusing on is uh, energy drinks. So I had it fallen down to two months per day now i've gone back to only one per day and i'm getting uh, one without sugar so i can beat the sugar addiction part of it first mm -hmm. and then after that i'll worry about the caffeine uh, addiction part mm -hmm. of it so so uh eating wise starting small small habits working towards something bigger again what about um like are you doing any sort of like exercise or anything like that well, uh, I work in a warehouse, so okay. I'm on my feet eight hours a day, gotcha. five days a week, uh, lifting boxes and stuff like that. Okay. So there's uh, there's at least that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on the weekend, I'm trying to walk. Uh, I don't have a specific amount of time I'm trying to walk, but uh, on, on my phone, there's a, a step tracker. Mm -hmm. So when I'm working, I have it in my pocket. And so on the weekend, I just try to match uh, however many steps I did during the week so that it stays pretty balanced. Mm -hmm. So let's say if on, uh, like last week, my average was about uh, 9,000 steps per oh, day. Oh, wow, that's so, so this time, yeah, and some days were uh, 14,000. Uh, but the average was 9,000, and so I'm trying to do 9,000 uh, today and 9,000 tomorrow. And then just every week, I just try to stay balanced this way. And for now, that's all I'm doing. Awesome, awesome. That's, that's good to hear. So let's go ahead and start wrapping this up. We're going to hit our last section here, which is content recommendations. So we had some more questions from our DJ Dadog on uh, top five <laughs> favorite books read. You got five favorites for us, the Japan Code? So it depends what you mean by books. Because right. if we're talking about light novels, I've only tried five series. So by default, they're my five favorites. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess I'll mention those and then I'll get into manga after because manga is what I, I know more. Okay. So for light novels, the five that I've read, so by default, my five favorites are uh, Kuma 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 Bear, uh, Honzuki no Gekoku Jo, Shisho ni Naru Tame ni Wa, Shuda no Erande Iraidemasen. That's a light novel title. <laughs> And then uh, there's Kono uh, Subarashi Sekai no Shukufuho, uh, which uh, Jordan mentioned earlier. Right. Uh, of course, uh, Re Zero, my favorite, uh, Re Zero Kara Hajimeru Isekai Sekatsu. And also uh, Tokio Kakeru Shoujo, uh, The Girl Who Leapt Through Time. Mm. 
And what I really liked about this one is that uh, I didn't read the book based on the movie. I read the original book that was like 100 years ago. No, not 100 years ago, like 50 or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, the story is different. It actually follows the aunt of the main character of the movie. So it happens in the past. Oh, okay. That's interesting. So that's actually really cool. It's the same concept, but with different characters and different plot. So it, it made it, it, it stayed fresh while being about the same subject. Is is that original? Like, did that come before the anime or was that after? Yeah, yeah way before. Oh, really? It, okay. It's like 50 years old or something oh, like that. I did not know that. OK, well, I might I, yeah. I might have to check that out because, yeah, I was like, I already saw the movie. I don't really want to watch it. But no. yeah, well, it's different. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's worth exactly. it. OK, cool. <laughs> and I think it's I've short. seen that. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've noticed that, but I I didn't know I didn't like I've never seen any of the the anime manga anything. But I was like, wait, this seems a little off. But like I was like, ah, whatever. Yeah, I didn't but, okay. know at first, so I was really confused. I'm like, I don't remember any of this. <laughs> Did I really not pay attention to the movie that much? But no, it was different, so that's why. And it's also sense. only around like 120 pages, so it's a pretty fast hmm. read. Was that was that all five of the novels? Yeah, yeah, for okay. the novels. Yeah. So what what you got on the on the manga? Stack? For manga, yeah, uh, I I I couldn't pick only five, so I have six. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna cheat. <laughs> so my my cheat answer is One Piece because that's my favorite yeah. series ever mm. across Talked any medium, anything. Yep. So yeah, it's a thousand and eight chapters up to date with it. Not in Japanese though. In Japanese, I've only read uh, 59 volumes, only read. Mm. <laughs> uh, uh, but in French, I'm up to date with uh, the chapters. And then I've also watched the anime twice. So that's a Jeez. lot. <laughs> okay. But then the other five that's not One Piece would be uh, Attack on Titan. I'm also up to date with this to the chapter. So I'm only waiting for the last chapter in two weeks. Same. And then it's over. Is there, is there only one left? I, I can't there's only one? Okay. Yeah, there's only one okay. left. I, I thought I there was. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. The anime nope. finishes, I think, tomorrow. So I'm just like, oh, man. Jeez. Yeah. There's, it's called the final season, but there's no way it's the final season. It I'm hoping. To be, it's yeah, going to be a I'm part one, like, part two. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Let's Either hope. that or a movie or something like that. Uh, then there's also uh, Shoujo Shu Matsu Ryoko. Uh, I think in English it's a Girl's Last Tour or something like that. It's basically a post-apocalyptic uh, slice of life. I, I so saw you mark this one on Book Meter. Combo. Yeah, yeah. I know this one, though. Uh, it, it also, also, that one has uh, no furigana, so it's a nice, uh, it's, it's, it's a nice transition Segway, from yeah. manga with furigana to light novels. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I like it for that. Also, it's one of the best endings I've ever seen really? personally. Um, then there's Haikyuu. Uh, mm -hmm. During season four of Haikyuu, I was like, I can't wait anymore. I'm going to binge the manga. <laughs> I did. And I gave it a 10. It was perfect in really? my eyes. <laughs> I, I really loved it. Uh, then there's also uh, Koei no Katachi, mm -hmm. uh, A Silent Voice. Yeah. Uh, the movie is good, but I had already read the manga in English. And the manga is more full uh, there's more details of course uh so i reread it in japanese and it was amazing uh, honestly i had i had tears while reading it <laughs> and there's even there's a I, I don't remember if it's in the movie but there's there's a long scene from the point of view of uh i don't remember her name but the mute girl mm -hmm. And in the manga, it's like that too. So it's a whole chapter with no dialogue whatsoever. And that was the first time I saw that. Mm. <laughs> and then my last of the fifth would be uh, Made in Abyss. I uh, absolutely nice. love that. Yeah, that, that one's on my list to start. Uh, have you have you thought about checking out the new one by uh, the uh, that last author, the uh, Fumetsu no Nate? I no. Okay, so that, no, that one's getting an anime in like I don't know, like a week or two. Oh, yeah. And yeah, 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 yeah. I'm really looking forward it's to that. Not, yeah, I'm gonna be watching that. Yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, and then yeah, Made, Made in Abyss is uh, man, the anime is really good on that one, so it's making me want to read the, the manga. It's, on it. it's one of those TV series that feels like a movie. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Have you watched the the, the movie sequel or not yeah. yet? Yeah, I've I've seen I saw the two recap movies and then I saw the new movie and I watched the series as well. Yeah. It was all good. I love that. It was all good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm missing out, apparently. Oh, yeah. You I haven't are. checked that one out at all. Yeah, that one's, that one's pretty good. No, no, I haven't. Okay. Jump in the abyss already. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, f favorite author? I I don't have one. Okay. I, I don't really pay attention to authors, Damn. sadly. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. What about um a favorite anime that is not mainstream? So, not Attack okay. on Titan, not Death Note. Yeah. yeah. What you got? <laughs> 
So I've got Attack of Titan. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> so the the first one is one uh, called uh, Ping Pong the Animation. Oh yeah, yeah. It's okay. yeah. So uh, this is uh, this actually falls very well in my serial restarter thing because I've dropped it five times before I actually stuck with it. <laughs> <laughs> but once I did stick with it, the thing is the animation is very strange. Mm -hmm. Uh, have you guys uh, watched uh, Devil Cry Baby or something yep. like that? Devil Man Cry Baby? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that. That's from the same director. So, oh, okay. okay so the, 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 that's that kind of uh, art style. And at first I hated it because I was a new anime fan, but then eventually I, I I was able to give it a shot. And it's in my top five uh, anime, even including the mainstream ones. Wow. So that's a lot of praise. Yeah. Have you seen um, <laughs> Tekong King Kree? It's uh, it's I think it's by the no. same guy who made Ping Pong. I haven't I haven't watched Ping Pong yet, but I I checked out that movie and that one was pretty cool. It, and it has that same like kind of ugly gritty art style. Yeah, that it's 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 unique. He also has like quite a few manga that are out that are in my stack to read. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> very cool author. Uh, next one would be Sora Yori Motoi Basho, uh, mm. a further place in yep. the universe, something like yep. that. Uh, really love that one and it was really motivational to see them you know work towards in their dreams and actually achieve them uh, i'm midway through I, have, I, have, I, I hope they just yeah. don't freeze at the end i i assume <laughs> i assume they won't but yeah go ahead I let's hope not at all <laughs> uh yeah i have i actually have like a uh, on my uh any list page i have a custom list for motivational anime mm. so when i need some motivation <laughs> i'll just rewatch one of those and uh the next two of uh, are actually in that list too uh, so there's uh, Kazegatsuyoku Fuiteiru, yeah. uh, Run with the Wind. Just watch that one. Great. Yep. Uh, oh, yeah. It's a great uh, sports anime, mm -hmm. but it, you don't even need to like sports anime to like this, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But And I also really like uh, one of the characters who hates running and sucks at it, got a treadmill and was reading manga while yep. running on the treadmill. And that's something I want to do, but just with walking. Mm -hmm. I want to, at some point, get a treadmill and just <laughs> walk while immersing in Japanese. Nice. And that's just a great combo. Yep. Uh, but, you know, I don't have space right now living in, <laughs> in one bedroom. <laughs> Uh, the next one is New Game. Uh, you guys might actually enjoy this one uh, if you like Slice of Life because it's about uh, uh, game developers. Okay. It's uh, these uh, girls uh, who are in a game developing uh, company and they, you know, build games. Uh, they're not the coders, though. They're the game designers. Mm -hmm. uh, but you do see some characters from the, the, the coding type of uh, uh, side of things. And then uh, my last one would be Otaku no Koi wa Muzukashi. Uh, love is hard for uh, Otaku. Uh, great rom com. Uh, and as a deep weeb, I can relate to it. <laughs> I'll have to check that one and out because I, I, haven't, I haven't seen that one. Uh, and it's short, it's only 12 episodes. Okay. So. And then the new game one, I, I probably just wrote it off for having girls as the main character. Yeah. The, yeah, it's a cute girl story. It does yeah, cute yeah, yeah. things. So. so I, yeah, I'll have to check both those out. Thanks for those suggestions. So uh, w yeah. what other uh, content are you enjoying right now? So uh, if we go with the anime first, uh, I'm mostly watching seasonals, but now it's the end of the season. So like most of them are stopping and some of them are about to stop. Uh, but some of those I, I was watching was, of course, Attack on Titan, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen yep. uh, has been great. I'm going to start the manga as soon as we finish, actually. Okay. <laughs> Uh, ReZero, uh, Mushoku Tensei, yeah. uh, Kumo Desuga Nanika. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're not I, I watching one. that one, that one's a great yeah. one. I just it's just amazing. finished that one. Yeah, or I guess the 12 <laughs> episodes, it's going to keep going. It yeah, felt like it stopped, another, but yeah. 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 Exactly. Uh, also, uh, Horimiya, which is a rom-com. And after two episodes, I went and bitched the entire manga <laughs> because I liked it that much. And actually, the manga ended this week. So that's uh, that's the end of that. <laughs> And I've also watched uh, Tensei Shitara Slime, mm. uh, the, the Slime uh, Isekai season two. I'm finding that one so and... boring. I, I, oh, really? Yeah. I, are, you, really? are you up to date with it or not? I, I, I'm in the middle of season two and I'm just like... That's uh, why. So I don't know if you know, but the beginning of season two, uh, they're just going back in the past to readapt things that they skipped because they didn't know they were going to get a season two. <laughs> okay. So that's why it feels kind of slow at gotcha. first. But once it gets started... It gets it gets dark. Let me okay. just put it that okay. way. <laughs> mm, okay. Okay. And 
the only anime I've been watching that's not currently airing uh, has been uh, Mushishi because mm. it has a really relaxing yes. vibe. So I've been watching it at night before going to bed. I'll watch an episode on two or two and then I just get sleepy. Mm. So I just go to bed. It's been great for my night routine. That's funny. That's how no, that's but, how I describe that one too. Like it, it makes you really? sleepy because I'm, I'm in the middle yeah. of watching that one too. Way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's really high quality and interesting yeah. stories, but they're slow. <laughs> Yeah, the colors are pretty dark usually, mm -hmm. except when it goes white, and then I'm like, oh, my eyes, but besides that. <laughs> uh, I've seen this. Okay, okay. I, I was like, wait, I've seen this before, but I, I don't, like, I've seen the picture, but I don't think I've actually seen they it. They used to push it on Netflix a lot. It was always recommended on yeah. Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I, any any other ones? Yeah, I have a couple other media, but for anime, that's it. Okay. That's the only ones I've been watching now. I mean, I skipped a couple of seasonals because I don't remember them already. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but for manga, I've actually started recently uh, reading uh, the Weekly Shonen Jump, nice. uh, the actual magazine. Mm -hmm. Uh, although I'm only up to date with three series in it, so that's mm. not much. But for now, that's it. Uh, so I'm reading in it uh, uh, Black Clover, mm -hmm. uh, My Hero Academia. Mm -hmm. And a new series called uh, Sakamoto Days. Uh, I don't know if you've heard oh, no. about it. It's it's uh, a guy who was an assassin, a top class assassin, who retired to marry his wife. They had a kid, and now they're working in a convenience store. And uh, mm -hmm. he's not allowed to do assassin stuff, but because he left the society, the society is trying to kill him. Mm -hmm. And so he has to kind of hide it from his wife, and hilarity ensues. Got <laughs> it. And uh, so that's for the just for the uh, weekly Shonen Jump. I'm like I said, I'm also about to start reading uh, Jujutsu Kaisen mm -hmm. because I just I have to read more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then for light novels, I've mentioned it multiple times already, but I'm reading uh, Honzuki no Gekoku Jo right now, and I also uh, restarted reading uh, Kuma Kuma. Uh, for for uh, Honzuki, I just finished uh, volume two this morning actually, and started volume three. And then with Kuma, I'm on uh, volume six. Although I'm reading the web novel, not the actual light novel, mm -hmm. uh, because you know it's free online and there's a mobile app, so it's great for my phone. Nice. <laughs> and then uh, there's also variety shows, which, uh, like we talked earlier, I do watch uh, frequently. Uh, I'm mostly right now. The only one I'm watching weekly is uh, Gaki no Tsukai, mm -hmm. uh, the same one I mentioned earlier. But in the morning, I've mentioned I started watching variety shows uh, to kind of wake up. And those I'm watching for that, uh, there's three of them that I'm alternating between. Uh, one is called uh, Documento Nana, Nanaju Ni Jikan. It's uh, a, a documentary style uh, episode where the crew goes to one location for 72 hours and they just interview the, the people that go there, the staff there and what it, the place means to them. It can be a random place like a dentist office or it can be a park or recently it was a bento shop. So it's uh, random places. Uh, the next that, one is oh, real quick, Budari. on that one. Yeah. That what yeah, yeah. wasn't documental. It was something else. No, 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 okay. no. I, I do know documental. Yeah, yeah. Though I love documental. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got gotcha. you. I, I was waiting for you to no, say that they start pranking these uh, people. Documental. Oh, okay. There we go. There we go. Okay. Cool. <laughs> uh, the next one is uh, Budari Tochu Gesha no Tabi. So basically, it's just a. Uh, uh, again in a comedian mm -hmm. goes on a train gets down at a random station and then just walks in that area and sees what there is so it's pretty chill and relaxing and obviously you get to see a little bit of real japan but obviously it's kind of planned where they're gonna go mm -hmm. in a way so yeah and the last one that i really enjoy uh, it's another travel show it's called uh well it's uh degawa tetsuro which is the name of the comedian no juden sasete morai masen ka it's uh this guy another guest and then the director of the show are on electric bikes and they go around rural japan and when their battery run out they have to find somewhere to recharge but since they can't plan when the battery is going to run out they they it often runs out you know somewhere where there's nothing so they have to walk and find a random person's house or a store or a restaurant or something and then you, you this one you actually do get to see some of real japan <laughs> that's that's pretty cool uh yeah, yeah i like this i don't think i've heard of most of those maybe besides yeah. Guy. yeah agreed uh what what about you jordan any any good content you've been enjoying lately um attack on titan yep um i don't if you haven't been watching that i don't know what you're doing yep. i don't know what, what are you doing yep. 
literally, I can sit literally under a rock. It's amazing. Go watch it. That, that's um, I've been reading the random stuff, so nothing, nothing. Just articles on IGN. IGN is a great website. I was like IGN Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, has lots in depth about video games and stuff. Um, was it Dengeki? I think that's another one. That's another. Uh, uh, what is it? Um, gaming site, really deep, good. Um, yeah, that's 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 it. Too. Have you? So, is it, so you're looking at a lot of like gaming news sites in Japanese. Have you seen a uh, mm-hmm. Automaton? No, I have. Check check I that one out. That's one. that's the only okay. one I've been using, and it's. It's more up to date, I feel like, than some of the other okay. ones I was looking at, like for Gamer, which uh, that one's okay. It's just dated. It yeah, like same, same. I got rid of that yeah, one too. Yeah. So yeah. that that one's that one's pretty good to check it out. Um, what uh, let's see. As far as myself, I've uh, been doing, like I mentioned, a lot of a lot more reading just in general. Um, but I think from here. I'm probably going to switch switch back and forth between the uh, Kiki Yomi stuff and just like doing more reading in the evening, but I still have like novels baked into the beginning of my day. Uh, and then as far as content, I just finished the anime for The Promised Neverland season two. And uh, ooh, is it? Ooh, ooh, I haven't. Ooh. I hear I watched like the first two episodes <laughs> and people are like, ooh, I'm scared. That's where I'm I'm scared. It's real bad. It's real bad. <laughs> like. I read I read the entire manga and I thought it went pretty downhill after the first season, even in the manga. But then yeah. the second season in the anime, it's like, let's introduce a bunch of characters in still frames as we montage the ending. And it's like And skipped the best arc after the first arc. Hello, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. No uh, They're gonna have to redo that probably at some point, but that's just it. It's like I I, I thought it was full, full I thought it was okay Alchemist. by the end of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Full Metal Alchemist is actually good. I think is the difference. That's yeah. <laughs> I I don't know. Yeah. I I like the Promise Neverland. I I did, but it, they they did it dirty with this one. End. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so so that's uh that was what I dealt with here. Uh, actually, right before the podcast, still mourning the loss of that oh. season. <laughs> um. So for your Kiki Yomi. Yeah, yeah. The only thing when you read and listen. And you come across a new word. Are you pause. pausing, looking yep. up that word? Okay, yeah. okay. Pause. Just, just curious. look it up. Just curious. Decide okay. if I want to keep it or not, or if I actually knew it or something like that. Re- uh, unpause. Like it's pretty simple. Yeah. yeah I actually I have a question okay. about yeah, that yeah, too. Yeah, please. So you, you're actually tracking, right? Like kind of like Stevie does. Yeah. So when you're doing that, do you track it as reading mm. or listening? I track it as visual novel right now. Oh, okay, you okay, have okay, it. Okay. Yeah, I have, I have a sense. different category because you're right; it doesn't really fall into either of those. But it's listening while you're reading, so it's something different. Mm-hmm. I might have to change yeah, the okay. column name, but I intend all of my visual novels to also be the style of experience, and I intend to yeah. keep up with this for handful more books that I have audio and text that matches them. So yeah, that's the plan. That makes sense. <laughs> all right, so in closing, uh. Let's see. The Japan Code, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at The Japan Code, uh, on YouTube at The Japan Code also. And there's also, if you're interested, you can, I haven't up- updated them in a long time, but I do have uh, two other YouTube channels. There's uh, The Japan Code Guitar, where, surprise, surprise, I play guitar. <laughs> and uh, The Japan Code ASMR, where, surprise, surprise, I do ASMR. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you. Uh, and Jordan, where can people find you online? On um, Twitter, I'm Bearded SSJ. That's that's me. That's where I'll be. All right. And YouTube. I forgot. I don't even remember my YouTube name. So. <laughs> It'll be linked. It'll be linked. People. Like Jordan's <laughs> Journey, I think. Yeah, yeah there yeah. it is. There you go. <laughs> Hype man. I got you. <laughs> uh, and then I'm Kanji Eater everywhere. Uh, please do check out the Discord. That's uh, That's been popping lately. So, uh Check that out. Also, Twitter and YouTube, as you're probably seeing this, even though it's streaming on Twitch. So uh, check out whichever one floats your boat. Also, Book Meter. I I would love to see what other yes. people are reading. I know the Japan Code is one of my favorite people to see what he's reading as well. So uh, go you, ahead Andrew. and follow <laughs> us there as well. And I'll uh, I'll refollow if you're not just reading like like some light weeb stuff, right? You gotta be you gotta be into the deep weeb stuff if you want to refollow. <laughs> decultured a bit. Yeah, yeah, decultured. 
<laughs> and uh, so in closing, uh, the Japan Code, what's one piece of advice you'd give people on their own uh, Japanese journey? It's going to be very cliche, but have fun. Seriously, that's the most important thing. If you're not having fun, uh, you might make it, but you're not going to enjoy it. Yeah. And chances are you're not going to make it in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what happened to me in all those previous attempts. I wasn't having fun and I just quit. But if you're having fun, you want to do more. So you're by default just going to make it. Awesome. Thanks so much for that. And thanks for coming on the show. Uh, looking forward to hopefully one day having you back on. And uh, we will yeah, absolutely. We will uh, wrap it up here. Appreciate everybody uh, again hanging out uh, in chat. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next Deep Weeb podcast later.